Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 100th edition of the Chronicles of Podcast. And these are the Chronicles of, of Virtue. It is I, the bearded brummy Jamie, and joining me, as always, as always, is this handsome devil right here. For the 100th time, it's the Scotsman Tom. I also said Beardsman then. That was that would have been very, very weird. <laughs> but welcome to the 100th edition of the Chronicles of Podcast. Hit! Hey there. You're about to enjoy the Chronicles of Tom and Jamie. Hi, everyone. I'm Kevin Mann. Hey, guys. My name's Annabelle Knight. Hello, this is Becky Baldwin. Hello, I'm Chesney. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Brayden from Say We Can Fly. It's only confetti when it's in the air. Have you been not talking about one of our teams? Ambrosia. Can't imagine some American going, oh my God, I'm going to go down to Miami Seaside. Joining us this week to talk all about their brand new album, Omen. It's of virtue. Jason, I'm the I'm sober, of virtue are a metalcore band that can easily be described as everything Tom looks for in a band, quite frankly. We are joined today by vocalist Tyler Ennis and guitarist Damon Tate to talk all about their brand new upcoming album, Omen, available on 29th of September and so much more. This interview is so much fun and I'm gutted we did couldn't get longer with these guys because this is absolutely yeah. amazing and you guys are going to love this one. Yeah, there's a lot of whispering. There's a lot of whispering in this interview, so I hope you've got decent headphones or wherever you do listen to this interview from. Um <laughs> But yeah, we got really in depth. But obviously, because we're quite a fo- uh, we're quite an in depth podcast, and we only go in an hour. It was really difficult to be like, uh, you know. It, so you will notice towards the end of the interview that it speeds up a bit because we're like, oh, cool. So what about this? So what about tell us about and tell us about that quickly now. Come on, give us the info, give us the info. So uh, we do apologize for the rushness of the of the end of it. And boys, thank you so much for joining us. It was we had so much fun. I know you're currently touring the UK right now with being as an ocean, and we're so gutted we can't be there. Um, it just happened to fall on a weekend where we're just both unavailable, which is which is bullshit. Um, but we will definitely see you boys soon, I tell you. Um, but boys and girls, you are gonna absolutely love this. This is just all sorts of phenomenally fantastically mental. But Jamie, yes, sir. Do you happen to have anywhere in your vocabulary any final words at all? Just a massive thank you to the boys of a virtue. It means absolutely the world that you're joining us for our 100th episode. A massive thank you to Jasmine from the Lloyd's Cartel for making this happy. Making this happy? Making this happen. And everyone, you're going to enjoy this one. Oh, she definitely made us happy by allowing us to speak to Tyler and <laughs> That's David. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 100 episodes in and we still can't speak properly. I absolutely yeah. love it. Tyler, Damon, thank you so much for taking the time to sit and chat to us. I'm sorry we didn't get longer. We'll definitely do this again sometime soon, though. Jasmine, you're a legend. Thank you so much as well. And ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, interviewing this week, it's Tyler and Damon of Our Virtue. Good. Amazing. Jamie's just going to do a very quick introduction and then uh, then we'll get this party started. And also, cool. you're more than welcome to swear. You don't have to bleep yourself. You're all good. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dame was like, I just woke up. No filter. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get his intro out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, today we bring you two wonderful guests as we are joined by a band who, as soon as I heard them, I said, that's a Tom band, if ever I've heard one. And by the message I got afterwards, I was absolutely bloody right, guys. Here to talk all about their upcoming album, Omen, available September 29th. We are joined by Damon Tate and Tyler Ennish as we bring you the Chronicles of, of Virtue. Hey. hey. That, was ni- that was the nicest introduction we've ever received. Yes. Hey, really? Yeah. And also, mm. also, you got my last name right. Actually Ooh. insane. I meant to double check it beforehand. I just went, no, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. 
Yeah, well, see, it's funny is because people think my last name is Enos, and we all know what that oh. rhymes with. <laughs> yes. So believe it or not, it's like there's two ends there, but it's fine. It's cool. Just call me Tyler, you know, and it but thank you. So thank you for that. Best introduction ever. Well, oh, Jamie, I, that ball was there and you just went, <laughs> see you later, cheers, then <laughs> bye. <laughs> It's gonna be one of your um, ringtone. Anyway, <laughs> I suppose we get into the really hard hitting shit straight away. How have the last few years been with the pandemic? Obviously, as a band, because obviously the con- all the world just went. No, nope, that's it. Nothing for nobody. <laughs> all stay in your houses for a couple of years. Fuck you all. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't been the greatest, but at the same time, it's kind of weird. Obviously, there's a lot of bad that you know came out of it, but it, I would even say in our case. It was good because we had a chance to kind of reevaluate a lot of different things. Look back at, you know, what was working on our last record cycle and kind of, I would say, fix some of those weaknesses. Learn a bit of, well, bit back, a little bit more about ourselves in that process. And then I guess because everyone just had, we'll call it free time in some cases. Yeah. I mean, it's not like anybody was touring or anything else at home. It's like, all right, well, hey, just concentrate on your life, get everything that you need it to get in order, and just keep working, keep grinding. That's all you can do, really, because you never know when the things are going to come back, if they are going to come back. If they do come back, what's it going to look like? So at the end of the day, just kind of do what you want to do, make what you want to make, and just keep checking on checking in on your family and friends. It's just it was a weird it's a weird thing. It still kind of feels like we're in it to some degree, but is that like over in the state sort of thing? Because obviously in the UK everyone's gone, cool, don't give a shit anymore. Let's all go outside. But I don't know obviously how because obviously over in America, nobody well, I don't want well, nobody knew anywhere what the what was going on. Um but I think obviously because Americans the, the, your states are run by different people, obviously whereas the UK is just run by one person. So I think obviously everyone did different things everywhere else, didn't they? So like I think Canada closed down for the longest amount of time ever, but then California were like, yeah, it'd be fine. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I mean Michigan was probably one of the harsher like lockdown states as well. So it's like I think there was a point where our businesses and things of, like that were a lot of stuff was probably closed for at least three months, four months. It caused a lot of problems because again, we have a state where people are very vocal about not wanting to either get vaccinated or yeah. just COVID is not real or, you know, having a lot of small businesses that do function in on like high foot traffic or, you know, a lot of tradesmen stuff. And you do feel bad in that sense where it's like, you know, you never want anybody to go out of business, never want anybody to lose their livelihood. But at the same time, it's like, it seemed like it worked the best case that it could for us. I mean, if you want to talk about states like that, I mean, that's, you go down south and it was, you know, Texas, they pretended like it never happened. Florida, <laughs> California to a degree. And it was just like, yeah. Um, Yep. It's like you just kind of <laughs> throw your hands up and go, well, I live here, so this is what I can do. So, Yeah, it fucking sucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just it how it is. <laughs> Absolutely. No, but it, but it is funny because like up, uh, so like up north um, in Michigan, I remember uh, the, uh, my girlfriend at the time, her family you know, did like a summer trip and stuff. And, uh, it was like probably about like three hours away and stuff. And when we went up there, it was like, it was like COVID didn't even exist. Like didn't at all. Like 2020, uh, July, it was, it was the craziest thing. I, I like, there was like go-kart, uh, there's like mini golf, go-karts, like people were going to movies and, and, I, and I'm just like sitting there like, I dude, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone right now. I feel like I'm not even on. I'm not even like living. This is this is weird because you drive three hours down back home, and it's like the only thing that you're doing is going to the grocery store, going to the gas station. That's about it. You're working from home. You're doing all that, but you go up there, and it was like everybody's all just like, "Man, fuck masks, fuck you know, yeah, you know, fuck people dying. Who cares? You know, it's just like it's 
it's i mean it, it, it it's literally like that that's like the mentality that they had i swear so and like if you were trying to be cautious or safe you know wearing your mask doing all that people would like people that are like i ain't wearing no mask i ain't doing this i don't i don't care about anybody else but myself they just they look at you like really weird i mean there was a uh, geez uh and i mean in our in our hometown there was like an old an older man that was telling some dude uh to put his mask on he's like hey man you should put your mask on and he stabbed him he stabbed him and he and what? yeah like yeah stabbed him and killed him like over this elderly gentleman trying to tell this person you know in a in a convenience store to hey put your you know you should put your mask on which you know kind of it there's there there's such a great line with that it's like you know mind probably mind your own business because it's not worth it you, you don't people are batshit crazy dude clearly they're batshit crazy like you don't know what someone's gonna do you, you might be like oh like i'm gonna tell this person off but then who knows what they're going through and they're at their breaking point and then they just stab you you know so it's a uh, it was such a it, it's it's just such a crazy thing to think about is like that all of this happened and now it's just kind of like covid doesn't exist you know it's it's such a weird weird feeling sometimes I, i'll be honest i was not expecting that <laughs> that was yeah. not where i saw that going at all yeah yeah you know i mean you know and that, that that's what it's that's a what's real crazy. deal it's like yeah it's it, i mean it's it literally like 15 minutes from my house i'm just like what you know yeah, and and yeah pe people are just nuts so just to just to have like things like that happen and, and then you know people just not understand why you know they're doing they're doing what they're doing and um and i also thought it was interesting how you know you guys are like yeah you know different states are ran, ran by different people and it is insanely crazy how you can go across the border like literally like five minutes and like it's a totally different world you know um well also ohio fucking sucks it's the worst state ever so um i mean we only live like two hours or about like an hour 45 from it and it is such an awful state so it's nice. like so it's just it's just it's interesting how people down there view you know how view us and how everything during covid for that and then we look at them just kind of like well first off you guys suck without covid but also with covid you're just you're absolutely atrocious like you know i'm not saying i'm not saying the people are you know the people are bad there's 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 good people bad people everywhere right but the state itself just fucking blows i mean it is for the Bengals and browns fans so i totally get it I totally, I feel, I feel it from over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, years, you're, you're, hey, you can't get any worse than being a Detroit Lions fan, though. I mean, I wasn't going to say anything, but I mean, <laughs> you had, like, you had like the greatest offense with the greatest, with the worst defense, like last season. So I don't know. I see big things. I, th I, I think, I think you're on, you know, you're on the Dan Campbell will sort you right out. I think you just need oh, some yeah, time no. to get, to get oh, yeah, settled. It's, it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. It's just, it, it's just funny how you know, like just our sports Detroit used to be like the sports capital. And now it's like, can't even get knocked out of the playoffs by Geno Smith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. Okay. Yeah. It's sad day. So a question I like to ask every guest we have on this show to take us back to the guys. We're young masters, young master, Ennis and Tate. What did you guys originally aspire to be when you were growing up before you sold your soul to rock and roll, as I say? What, what was it like? Train driver, astronaut, I don't know, whatever it may have been. Ooh, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea. <laughs> I think I just, I'd probably have to ask. Oh, that's a good question. You know what? We'll say a train conductor. I don't know. It just, it sounds good. <laughs> it's not, I like trains as a kid. That works. I, we'll I play with them. We'll just we'll call it that. Okay, so train train conductor Damon. Okay, got it. There you go. <laughs> choo choo. Um, that's his next or, stage introduction. <laughs> so for me, um, I grew up a, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say this the right way because it is the right way. I grew up a football uh player, not a soccer player. Um, you so, grew up a what? 
a football player. <laughs> a sock a soccer player. <laughs> this, is Amer- this, is, this is America, buddy. Oh, oh, that's right. You're one of those. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. I forgot, Damon. Like, this is America. Wonderful. You better you better speak American. <laughs> hey man. There's oh, two things yeah. that I'm pas- passionate about in this life. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't you say don't you say it. Don't you say it. <laughs> Damon. <laughs> oh man <laughs> he's gonna say it just say it just get off your chest anyways next next question <laughs> why yeah, do you so, uh, so, so on, sorry i'm sorry sorry so yes so soccer player but then i tore my acl uh my freshman year of high school or i don't know what i'm i don't know what you guys call it over there but um i guess just school whatever yeah. um like normal people <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so that and um yeah just turn to music and then um you know unfortunately damon and mike at the time didn't have any other options so they asked me to join the band so here we are sad day <laughs> It all went downhill from here. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's obviously I, a... Oh, sorry. No, 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 I was just going to say I was only kidding, man, because <laughs> I think they're great, but carry on. <laughs> so it's obviously a safe bet to say that you guys are very passionate music fans growing up to do what you do today, but what was it that made you turn around from going, I no longer just want to be a fan of music. I want to dedicate my life to this. I need to play music. What was that point for you guys? Hmm. <laughs> For me, it was probably ooh, probably like my late teens, early 20s were just being a young person, getting into all kinds of trouble, needed something to kind of like focus all hmm. of that like nervous energy and just kind of frustration and all that bottle it up, actually put it into something constructive because I would say at the time it was just a lot of I mean, you were hanging out, you go to shows and you party with your friends and do all this, but then you kind of realize like, ah, you are spinning your wheels a little bit. And at the same time, you know, like anything else, I would say like, I would sit there and like write songs or write things like I was playing bass at the time, but you always played in bands where, and I'm sure, I don't know if you've had this experience or not, but it's like, you know, you either had like a vocalist that didn't write stuff or guitar players that didn't write anything or anybody else. Damn. It's like, I, mm, wow. Yeah, I'm kidding. So, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm going to totally deal kidding. with you after this phone call <laughs> is over. With. Oh, my God. I'm so I'm so kidding. I knew that was going to get him. Oh, yes. man. Yes. <laughs> No, man, it's 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 oh funny. Cause it, it's funny because Damon writes. I'm I'm very sorry to interrupt you, but it's funny because Damon writes a lot of stuff. But I knew that it would make him. I knew that that would make him like. Wow, Tyler, that's how you really feel. All right, sorry. Continue, Damon. I, you know, I did have something heartfelt coming, but you know, at the same time, lazy people. That's what inspired me to turn music from a hobby into a lifestyle is because you know what? When you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. You gotta do it yourself. And then you and then you do it. <laughs> do it. Just do it. Um <laughs> Uh, for me, I uh, my my brother played. Uh, All I can hear is laughing in the background. I know. My my brother oh, got a guitar. Uh, I don't know, probably around like two thousand three, two thousand four, whatever. And he played. You know, he took lessons. Played like story of Wait, the Justin year. Justin took lessons. Yeah, I know, right? Crazy. Shout out Justin's lessons. <laughs> Whoever that teacher is, you might want to give him money back. <laughs> My, it's it, it, yeah it's it, it's my yeah my my brother justin uh and damon have a, have a nice little 
I, I, a very friendly feud and beef going on, so that's great. No, it's a one-sided rivalry. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. But yeah, he played he played story of the year like like I swear every single day after school. So um, you know, just really really enjoyed um really enjoyed them and they, they became one of my favorite bands and um you know just kept expanding i guess my horizons and um and then just went and watched uh breaking benjamin or three days grace and breaking benjamin 2008 with my mom and i think it was at that moment i realized like you know it would be really cool to to make this into something because i i tore my acl and and stuff and just playing music for fun with some friends and then just uh, created a band with a couple couple friends from school and my brother and then you know just hopped from band to band and was in the same scene with a virtue and funny story actually 2012 uh a virtue opened up uh for impending doom and for today Ooh. and yes and i was at that show and it was the last time that i was in a pit like actually like in a pit because some dude a 200 and probably like 70 pound dude jumped from the stage and need me in my head and i blacked out yeah so you have the worst luck <laughs> yep. well yeah so so literally like you know my my one of my first real impressions of a virtue at the time was oh yeah it was a great show they were awesome but i got you know i got a concussion i had a, a very 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 small fracture watch your um, watch your head like, yes watch my head you didn't do that you didn't do that i know but i'm sure why why is some dude that's like six seven jumping off the damn stage and then i get hit out of all the people there's there was tall people around it's like everybody was, was like oh everybody's like oh fuck that fuck the short guy he's, he's getting the he's getting the knee to the head not me of course that's how the law of hardcore physics works i know <laughs> it's like one you of those things this, like but when if below this if you're below this hand or whatever you're gonna get knee in the head <laughs> exactly it's called but if you got if you sh- if you're you know six seven three hundred pounds and you obviously shouldn't be stage diving it's like all right Who's the, who are the smallest group of people that I could jump on, potentially? <laughs> Who's going to hold me up? Oh, you, Midget Brigade. You guys are all going to... It's just how it is. Like, Well, well I was... I was just like, I was just like enjoying the show, and I I just like look up, and I just see this dude, and I was like, oh, hell no. And, <laughs> he, and he came at me, and he kneed me in my head, and I just like, I remember I was like, what just happened and yeah i had to go to the hospital like the next day and because i i had a really bad headache and it was just like yeah a very very small little you know maybe maybe that's why i am the way i am today not because my brother dropped me on my head <laughs> but because of that it's, one you don't realize that he probably he entered mortal combat and yeah. obviously as he do, as he dove and hit you it's like fatality and it's like <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Because this is a simulation, so that was a real. So that 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 was a. <laughs> no, that, none of this is real. Yeah, none, none of this, this is real. real. No. Nope. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing a virtue apologized to you by asking you to join the band. I'd say it's happened, right? No, they had no other options. Like I said, so it was just kind of like, hey, uh, you know, this I'll guy, listen. this guy's kind of a nerd, but whatever. <laughs> like we'll uh, we'll we'll have him along for the ride and no, figure I mean, it out. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll figure it out from there. But it's uh, I mean, at all the all the back and forth that we all have is is on all, all in good fun, and we you know we all love each other. I think, um, and uh, dude, you're crying. Oh, I... <laughs> it was his face when I said that. No. <laughs> I just want everybody to know that in the during the process of this phone call, I voted. <laughs> what local election stuff which is important see look at that Next, so use you your power like, like, use your power wisely so and crazy. unfortunately at the time i couldn't vote for a different singer but Tyler <laughs> made the cut so <laughs> oh 
think he broke it. It worked out. I don't know. I think it worked out, see, I guess. Are okay. we going to see a post at some point today being like, just like a massive headline being like a virtue split? But like, you know, all these, <laughs> they've got all these shows coming up. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, do you know what? We'd had enough for each other. <laughs> no. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll make that on, I'll make that on this ding, this ding interview. I'll go be like, hey, guys, I'm unfortunately not going to be, I got, uh, uh, just like our our Lord and Savior uh, <laughs> Donald Trump once said, "You're fired." So I'm gonna tell him. By the way, full disclaimer is not our Lord and Savior, dude. Batshit crazy. Oh. dude, is batshit fucking crazy. And yeah, I just I need to get that. I'm I'm not trying to have someone cut this and be like, "Wow, a virtue likes Donald Trump." Like hell to the fuck no. If there was ever a clickbait title for you, this will get you all the views that you, you need in the world. <laughs> I'm okay, sending this off the TMZ as soon as I end this shit. It's going. There you go. He just gave it to you on a silver platter, my man. <laughs> yep. Yep. There you go. There, there. There's the clickbait. Our Lord and Savior, Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna like, look at me like. That's... Oh. 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 <laughs> they're gonna be like, "What is wrong with this band?" Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, see that that that's gonna be like. Talking about down. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> that that makes yep. sense. They're, they're from America. There you go. Yep. They'll see Tyler. They'll see the blonde hair. They're like, eh, makes sense. You know. I mean, I can't act surprised because, yeah, you know, makes sense. You know, there's. Yeah. there's oh, makes more there. sense. Makes more sense with Mike, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! That's a wild. That, that's a wild concept. We don't need to go down that road. <laughs> no, we do not. No, we do not. Nope. Do we? Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll we'll reel this back oh, in a little bit. We'll, 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 we'll stay, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think we'll Mummy is about to survive over here. He's just giggling <laughs> and as red as a cherry. Love Jamie's it. done. That's it. He's, oh, yeah. he's game game <laughs> over for for you. For you. Um, yeah. If you if you wanted anything serious out of this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh no, but that's not how we that's not how we roll here at all. No. So no. <laughs> we love the madness and the you know tangents and the fucking god knows what else. So if you if it's more there, Damon, bring it. Keep bringing it. Keep bringing it. It'd be great. And oh, uh, we got heat for days. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. Obviously, Damon, you're an original member of the band. So, like, how did you guys all meet? And then how did, obviously, Tyler get involved? So, I met Mike. We used to play in a couple bands back a long time ago when we were, you know, smaller gentlemen. Uh, Again, went through some changes over the years. Tyler, he played in another band called Ground Tracer, which if you haven't, Look, you should look it up and check it out because it's pretty sick. He played in that band with our old bass player. And at the time, our singer quit. And again, really, by default, or no other thing, it was just a matter of like, oh, we know you. We got some shows booked. You're going to do it. And he's like, I don't know. And we're just like, you don't have a choice. And he's like, are you sure? And we're like, get in the van. And he's like, okay. (laughs) Yeah. So, oh, you know. no, no. So, and y- you want to know what's bullshit about this? My what? first out of state shows. Okay. We play our first show. We play at, we go on stage at like 1 30 in the morning. 1 30 in the morning, my first out of state show. And I mean, dude, I was like, a, I was like a kid on Christmas. I was like, dude, this is so cool. I'm like, what? I'm going out, like, I'm going to play. So, like, to 11 people that were there. Yeah. But the that- crazy thing is, is all like, most of them were like singing the lyrics, which is cool. Which that for me, nice. I did not have a lot of time to learn, uh, to learn the, um, you know, like the songs. So I forget things a lot. So I was like, dude, when I started, when I saw them singing the lyrics, I was like, oh, this is not going to be good. Like I'm going <laughs> to, I'm literally, I'm literally going to be saying something. And you know how, like, I'm sure you guys talked to a lot of bands and you have those people that are like front row and you're like looking out to the crowd and you see them like mouthing the words and it's not right at all (laughs) yeah uh yeah that was the opposite like they were probably looking at me like wait wait those aren't the lyrics 
you know, <laughs> and, and, and things like that. So like that, that was my first, like, Holy cow, this is crazy. And then we played, uh, it was just like two really quick shows because the third one canceled or whatever. And we we're on our way back home and it was like four in the morning and this the van broke down. We were stranded on the Ohio Turnpike. Again, fucking trash Ohio. <laughs> stranded for eight hours. My first time ever going out. And I remember I got home and I was like, I'm never doing that again. Nope. Nope. I was like, I got the full experience of what touring's like. I'm good. And then, of <laughs> course, the next time that they're like, hey, Italian, yeah, yeah, sure, let's go. You know, like it's it, it it's just funny because like, you know, I'm ve very thankful that they they, uh you know, asked me to to fill in and stuff. And it just, you know, it just worked out. It's really cool. I'm glad that we got to do what we, you know, I guess I'm glad I got to help keep the train rolling for a virtue. And then, you know, we got to make it our own again. You know, it's kind of like a rebirth instead of uh, um. I mean, there was so many times too that I remember Damon, uh, Damon and Mike, you know, any time after like a show, they were just like, you know, hey, you're sounding great, but just like, stop trying to be Nick. Stop trying to be the old vocalist, be yourself. And I think that was like the best advice that I could have been, you know, had heard because I was trying so hard to make it. So when people would come to see Old Virtue, they'd be like, oh yeah, I mean, no, it's not the actual vocalist, but like that, you know, at least it sounds similar. But when I stopped doing that, I, I feel like, you know, I, I was myself, it, it, I think it just gave people a different perspective of like what a virtue is and a virtue is more than just the voice, you know, it, it is more than just the, like the vocals. It's like, there's so many different elements, especially the older stuff. Um, I mean, Damon was on some other shit when he was writing that. That's all I have to say about that one. Half the half the stuff I like that that they like had me learn. I was like, why? You know, it's, like it's called, it, a, it's called a time signature. Yeah, yeah, I, dude. Uh, it can woo, it can change. Woo, I did not know that for the longest time. I was like, why is this speeding up? Why is this slowing down? You know, and it's like, and I remember there there was a part in um uh song they had uh damaged and literally like. It just, it fucking, it, I, I want to say it was at the, it's at the beginning, right, Damon? It like cuts into a different, like the beginning and then it, it, it transitions into a different time signature. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and it, and it starts like going and I was like, you know, in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, the vocals are going to start here. And then they didn't. And I'm like, okay, when did the vocals start? And I remember be, like live one time, um, we in 2017 before so i i was officially like in the band i was announced already we played a, a hometown show and this was the first time that i think a lot of people have like actually seen me as the vocalist and we were playing you know a most mostly older songs because uh actually except one there we only had one song that was like me uh like uh on the song so i remember yeah we played damaged and I remember looking out into the crowd, kind of like how I was, you know, saying about the first time I ever, I ever played uh, with a virtue. It was like, I remember looking out of the crowd and there was this, this guy, um, I'm going blank on his name right now, but uh, I've seen him at shows throughout the years. I know he's a fan of a virtue. And I remember this dude had his arms crossed, like staring at me while I'm playing the song. And I was like, if I fuck this up, like this is going to be bad. And I remember he came up to me after and he was like, I was so nervous. Cause I was like, dude, there's no way that I did that, that, that song. Right. Absolutely not. And he was like, I'm impressed, man. And I was like, Oh, th th thanks. He's like, what did you, did you not think you did good? I was like, I'm be honest. I thought I fucked that up. And you know, and he was like, Oh no, you did. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, Oh, okay. Okay. He's like, yeah, but he's like, you know, I'm not, he's like, this is my first time seeing you. Like, I, I wouldn't expect you to know, or, you know, expect you to hit everything perfectly, but he's like, no, you fucked up, but you know, that that's the beauty of live music. So ever since that conversation I had with him, I think it's, it, it's a lot easier to, to just realize like, you know, you might not get everything and there are people that are going to know you fuck up, but 
nine times out of 10, people aren't going to know. So it's like, mm. as long as you, you, I mean, it's the classic saying, fake it till you make it, baby. And, you know, that's why I'm still in this band. Fake it till you make Just, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, you they, I mean, yeah, because, you know, you heard Damon, he, you know, he voted me out or wanted to, but fortunately. See, that's you know. a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> why? What's a lie? I don't want to vote you out. At all. Oh, but oh, but I was the only option. That's right. Got it. <laughs> Big difference. Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> Just going back to the uh, the people you mentioned that obviously they're mouthing but have absolutely no idea the lyrics are. My favorite ones are the ones that do that, but know like one or two words. So they'll go eh, did you, down. You know, they're sort of people. <laughs> they're, they're the best. <laughs> They, hey, they like, say the name of the song. Like, if you have the hook of your song, like, is is the title, they'll hit the, at least the title word. <laughs> yeah. That's the best. So but it's the, but you know what, man? <laughs> at the end of the day, it's the effort that counts because they understand I did not do my homework. I probably should have listened to this band more. And this isn't just about, like, everybody. But then you realize, like, oh, I'm at the front. Uh oh, I probably should have paid more attention. I'm just gonna do some stuff and hopefully nobody notices. But uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, notice. <laughs> and then when you get the then you then when you do get the certified, you know, capital W weirdo that does know your song, you're like, oh shoot, this is scary. I don't like it. Go away. <laughs> Go away. Where, where's the where's the fish mouth? Bring them back. <laughs> Because the people that like actually like know the lyrics and they're like looking you dead in the eye, like <laughs> it's fuzzy, it is a little bit creepy. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's kind of. A... <laughs> oh no! I was just say you get one. You get one or the other, or both. That's great. I don't care. Do whatever you want to do. It shows. It's have fun. We've got your ticket money, do we? <laughs> I don't get the ticket money. Who gets, who's well, getting yeah, the ticket true. money? <laughs> but you guys have had some amazing opportunities over the years. Like you were talking a minute ago about it, playing into a room at half one in the morning to like 11 people. And then you're touring over, all over the world recently with like Disturbed and Three Days Grace and bands like that. But where, what was that point that sort of launched you guys? Was it a song or a moment or was it just progression over time of constantly bashing out these great songs? Uh, I would say it's, definitely progression i would say with covid before it's like it kind of reset everybody's timeline and for us it was a matter of we had momentum beforehand with our last record our cycle got cut short but again it was just we kind of just were like you know what let's just do what we do best just go write music write what we want to do we talk to people we're out in the world you know see what people's frustrations are kind of internalize that we have our own things that we were going through and you just put that into the songs. And then when it came time to release them, I would say at least this go round, it's definitely, we shifted a little bit with the sound. We kind of, we tightened up some of our songwriting, wanted to make, you know, the, the choruses. Hello. Come here. All right. We have a, we have a guest. All right. Oh, Tyler's oh. been replaced. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Tyler, you can. Come here, buddy. Yes. He, he's been like, bothering me at my leg but yeah basically all i was gonna say is like with sinner and like what we were doing with that ep it seemed like it kind of kick-started a lot of newer stuff a lot of things a lot of attention that i don't want to say we weren't getting beforehand but some people are just like oh now you're on my radar and i'm like okay well we've always been here but since we have your attention we're just going to do the, keep doing the damn thing. And it's, it's been great though, to be honest, like to be able to, you know, like we were in, in Europe about a month ago to be back there in four years and still feel like it's our second home. And in some ways, some of the best shows that we've ever played to, you know, online stuff or just, just talking to people, seeing, I, I still, to this day, it's kind of crazy. So Tyler and I went to go see uh, being as an ocean who we're going to be touring with. Uh, in a couple of weeks here overseas and Tyler got there before like I did as far as like getting to the venue and lo and behold 
he sees cha- uh, cha- champion wrestler Rhea Ripley standing across the street. And the funny part about it is, like, she had posted, like, a workout video with one of our songs, uh, shouted us out, like, did all that stuff. And then it's, like, she's just standing right there. And Tyler happened to, you know, say, hi, like, waving feverishly. And she goes, oh, yeah, I recognize you. Walked over. He sends that to us in our chat. And I was, like, this is a, like, this is a simulation. This is not real. This this is, like, a one in 100 thousand million percent chance this was going to happen but even having little stuff like that man it's cool to just see it to see where your music can go you know potentially who it can touch or influence and it's just it really good is the byproduct of you know people such as yourselves where you know you're giving us a platform to come on here and just be completely dumb and stupid and not talk about anything important but in some ways, it is the most important because, guess what? We're we're just we're human beings. We like to have, we like to joke around. We like to talk. We like to connect with people. And hopefully, at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, we do have some serious stuff. We have serious messages to talk about. But life is short. You want to be able to enjoy yourself. You want to be able to enjoy those moments. You want to be able to share those moments with people that you know, with you, who you don't know. Make new friends, and. That's really, like, I guess, the, the the craziest change that we've seen is just the fact that, like, it feels like a, a veil in some ways has been lifted to where we can. It's not like we haven't been ourselves the whole time because we have. But people can actually see it and soak it in a little bit more. So that's the probably what, like one of the most refreshing feelings that has came about recently. Absolutely. And you've got to be yourself. You're important because you're not just selling the music. You're selling yourself. You're selling yourself as a brand. Even if you are going on Instagram and insulting our great country, the UK, saying we drive on the wrong side of the road, etc. Damon, I saw that earlier. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, I can insult your country in more ways than one. You guys have baked beans. You need to get rid of those. No. Um, y- no. Your bacon's not real. That's for sure. That's it's ham. That is awesome. That is- your bacon is amazing. It's- and we need to get rid of ours and get yours because... I was in New York in February and I didn't want to leave because I was like, I just need this food. I want to just take all the food, all the bacon at least, and take it with me and have mm-hmm. it here in the UK. Exactly. Bacon's not bacon's not real. Blood pudding is good. I don't know what it is. I but... No. <laughs> he said I don't like that, you know. The boy and as far as like that. <laughs> politics, Brexit, that's a whole we don't even oh, need to get into that. No, nope. right. don't get him started. Don't get him started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, believe me, trust me. I met some. I met some 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 pro Brexiters uh, when we were there last time, and it was a wild conversation. Just not a whole lot going on. I was like, okay, okay, this is what it's like. This is I'm the. So sorry. <laughs> it was cool. Hey, at the end of the day, man. Like, I don't agree with what they were saying. But it, I'm always curious to hear other people's like the side of things or why you would be, why you would want that. I understand why people want their autonomy in some ways, but they also have to remember that it's still government. Like you don't have as much influence as you might think. Mm-hmm. The things that are being promised to you or being built to you more than likely are just propagated. It's just it's smoke and mirrors. And when you're when it finally when all these regulations and things finally settle in, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I got fucked up. <laughs> I done <laughs> effed up, man. A hundred percent. I mean, uh, your brand new album, Omen, is out on the 29th of September. How excited are we, boys? Very excited. It's been a long time coming. And again, to kind of piggyback off of like, you know, putting out the other music, it's like, we're still a little old school in some ways where I love singles, singles, putting them out to be able to, you know, compete and everybody's attention spans are a little shorter nowadays. Yeah, it, it is. It feels great to be able to finally have the full body of work for somebody to, you know, I get excited to just get a record and click the first track and let it play, see where it takes me. Regardless of, you know, if I like certain songs or don't like certain songs or, there might be a style where like, ah, oh, I'm not used to hearing this from this band. 
but in context of the whole record, you're like, oh, I can kind of see where they were going with it. I can see how they wanted to tell the story. And again, the most important part is it will be there. It'll be in its form where I feel like it'll finally feel understood. Like a lot of parts, you know, we have some heavy songs. We have some softer songs. Some people are like, oh, I don't know what to do. And it's like, I only listen to death. And it's like, don't worry. It'll all make sense. It's cool. Just give us a chance. And we'll get you there. And if you hate it after that, well, thank you. At least you listened to it one time. <laughs> we made you suffer for 46 minutes. <laughs> it's, is that sort of like some of the feedback? Because you've released four singles off the album so far. Is that some of the feedback you've received? Like, things like that? Comments like that? Oh, dude, I've, I've, I've gotten every kind of comment on this done, too. This is, you know, the best stuff that you guys have put out to this is sellout garbage. This is, you know, trash radio rock to I'm like, well, we do have heavier songs. And then they'll be like, well, I like this one. And I'm like, oh, okay. well, then it doesn't matter. There's there's something for everybody. You know, there's people that they're like, oh, I only like the softer stuff. I can't really understand what you're saying on the other thing. And it's like. Well, thankfully, all of us like everything. So it's just a matter of, I think it's one of these records where when you can hear it top to bottom, because I think we all used to feel like this in some way, shape or form when we were first getting into whatever styles we were into. It's like, this might have been a little too harsh or this might have been this. But then there's always a band that comes along that changes the calculus of how you think about certain things. And you're like, you know what? Maybe I can tolerate a little bit more of this. Or maybe I can have a little more. It's like you sh- it's shown to you in a way that's a little more digestible. And then you can open your horizons a little bit more. It's like you're not most people aren't going into a sushi restaurant just getting, you know, surf clam, sashimi and, you know, chef's choice. It's like, no, you start with a California roll. And you kind of work your way through it. You see what you like. You see what you don't like. But you're there. That's the that's the whole important point. You're with us. You're, you're with us for the ride. And if we happen to just take you to a different destination and then somebody else picks you up from there, even better. That's okay. Never heard anyone describe their album as being like a sushi restaurant and it's possibly the greatest thing I've ever heard to sell an album, ever. Could be hungry. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your PR team were very, very kind enough to send the album over to us. And as soon as I pressed play on Hypocrite, I was like, oh, fuck. Follow, subscribe. This album is going to be unbelievable. And I wasn't wrong. I actually struggled to pick a song that I enjoyed more than the rest because every song's a banger, in my opinion. Like, I, I just loved it from start to finish. Um, oh, yeah. Thank hip- you. Hip- oh, not at all. Not at all. Hypocrite was definitely one of my favourites on there. And Omen, the self-titled song, was also just like, yeah, fucking, these songs are unbelievable. But um, what sets this album apart from the others? Hmm. Coming in with the hard questions. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it's better <laughs> good it's a great answer it's all right it's well, a great interview guys thank you see you later yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's worked himself no, but... that sushi analogy he's just arms on there <laughs> yeah i gave i gave you all i had no I, but um it's way more sincere in the sense of like we had to we kind of had to pull a lot of out of ourselves in order for this to happen, there was a lot of a lot of bad stuff again, like not even just COVID, but it's just a matter of I don't know. There's stories that I had from my past. There's things that Tyler was working through at the time. Mike, it's like experiencing loss of family, everything. It's like we didn't want to, I guess, hide behind the music as much anymore. Not that we did with the last one, because I feel like on What Defines You, we really started to open up a lot more and put more of our personal stories into yeah. the music. But in this case, it's like, again, how you, you were talking about it before of the world kind of just shut down and no one knew when it was going to come back, how it was going to come back. And I feel like if you're going to create during that time, you have to be your most honest self, most true self, because this is the time when, the most people are hurting. This is the time when the most people are looking for something to 
connect with. And not everybody's story is going to be the most unique, but that's kind of the point is that we are all kind of in the same boat, doing the same thing to different varying degrees. And really, I would say like it's kind of like a hidden message in, in some ways, but it's like, it's kind of, it's a unifying record. We don't have a record in our arsenal that just kind of comes together the way that this one did with the different sounds, with the different backgrounds, with everyone that's involved with it and who it's been able to reach, touch, and just kind of, I don't know, infiltrate in some weird ways where it's like, it just feels like the fiber of this is finally like grabbing and reaching hold of everyone and everything that it needs to and bringing it together for the right reason. That to me, that's the, that's the most important thing. That's why, that's why it makes it this one, the best one so far until we make the heaviest next record. Like everybody else. It's more impact, more impact when you whisper. Yes. <laughs> All right. Now Tyler can be a little more serious with his answer, but yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, you guys are beautiful. Yeah, we love you. What? Um. Uh. Yeah. But um. Sorry. Wow. I don't know what's going on in my voice there. Um. But what sets this record apart from everything else and from everything else from a virtue is, I think we finally found what what a virtue is as a whole. Like what a virtue is with uh Damon. What a virtue is with Tyler. With Mike. With Ryan. Like all of our, indiv our individuality uh, is showcased within these songs, um, within the words that we're writing, within the, the instruments that, that, you know, we're writing and everything, everything was, uh, you know, very carefully tuned and um, you know, the parts that you're, you know, you hear on Omen uh, you know, there's certain parts in there that, that maybe it might not make sense in, in, in some ways, but, it was done like that for a reason, you know, and, and I think for us, it's exciting to be able to have uh, this body of work that for Damon and myself, um, the, during what defines you, uh, we kind of blended a lot of our vocals, like, you know, Damon, like Damon and I both like saying the same parts, uh, mainly, especially for live reasons, you know, cause then it's like, when you hear it's, it's you still get that that element that your brain listens to. But um, I also wasn't very good at seeing uh, during, during that, that time. Like I was kind of newer uh, with all of that, you know, they challenged me. So this, this record cycle and these songs, and it's also really cool and interesting because um, floating and hypocrite were the first two songs that we wrote um, uh, on this, on uh, Omen. And uh geez sober and cut me open were the last two songs that we did so it's really interesting to me when i go back and listen to those songs i'm like holy cow my singing got a lot better my screaming got a lot better within within two years like you still you know it's me but things are a lot more polished and i i think for for myself and and for damon like i said it's it's really exciting that we both kind of get to shine um on omen it's it's not just a Hey, you're doing this. You're doing this. Like sober Damon's voice is, you know, Damon's voice fits the softer stuff a lot, you know, a lot better. It's a lot more pleasing in maybe some people's eyes, but I think that was one of those things. Like we, we wrote that and Damon just kind of looked at me and he was like, yeah, I think, I think uh, this just needs to be you. And I was like, what? No, aren't you going to do the chorus? And he's like, no, he goes, I think this just needs to be you. And I think that just like, I think, I think genuinely it's, it, it, it just goes to show like how selfless, you know, all, like all of us are in this, in this band and how much we truly care about like what is best for the band and not, you know, there's no ego, there's no pride within any of that. Like, you know, I do help load in, by the way, I actually do stuff as a vocalist, so I'm not just a normal vocalist, 
don't you dare start getting close to that camera, Damon. You know damn well. You know damn well. Okay, there we go. Now, cat makes everything better. <laughs> but yeah, so it's 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 genuinely one of those things where I, I think um, it just goes to show like we we care more about what's going to sound good and what's going to sound more raw and real instead of just being like, okay, well, Tyler's the vocalist. Tyler does all the this or Damon's voice fits this better. But it's like, that's the challenging thing is, you know, um, if Damon's voice does sound better, like we're just going to go with that. Like that, that's just how it is. It's not just like a envision, you know, on paper, like, Oh, this probably would fit Tyler better. But then, you know, I do it or something or Damon. And I'm just like, I think you would sound better on that. And I think that was the best part for us for this album is we were able to both mature as vocalists, as, um, uh, as, uh, you know, lyricists and, and, and everything. And the lyrics that we wrote are more real than ever. And, um, you know, we, we did have some help on, on a lot of that stuff. And, uh, I think, I think our, our genre needs to be a little bit more open to collaborations because the, this album would not be what it is without, without them, you know, it wouldn't be. And we're very thankful for their hard work and their like careful, um, you know, just like, uh, attention to detail and about like what makes a virtue a virtue and it's really cool when you can listen to the album and be like unless you check the credits i feel like it sounds pretty you know there's so many unique elements that it's just kind of like it it really does sound like maybe we had different producers for every song or something like there's mm -hmm. so many uh, like i don't i don't really get a lot of like that holy cow this is the same you know, this is kind of the like same vibe. It's just like hits you in the feels hits you. And like, you're just like, yeah, I don't know why I'm angry, but I'm angry now, you know, like listening to that or, you know, it's just like, you know, like, wow, like I'm having a great day today, but just listen to that song like broke my heart. So there's that. I loved how like passionate you guys both sound when talking about this album. It's, it's beautiful to see. And I really hope that the fans who listen to this, get that when they listen to it because it is absolutely phenomenal i'm so conscious about time because obviously i know you guys have got another interview but we definitely need to get you guys back on again and deep dive because this has been so much fun i've absolutely had Thank so you. much fun talking to you guys before we do let you go though any plugs social medias websites you want people to go check out absolutely a virtue band.com we actually have a real website because we're old people uh twitter x TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all at a virtue, YouTube, Omen, like you said, September 29th, a rising empire. Uh, we got two CD release shows that we're doing um, October 6th and October 7th here in Michigan. One first one is Detroit. Second one is in Lansing. Got a bunch of sick bands coming out. So if you happen to be in the United States and live in the Midwest, come hang out with us. Otherwise pre-order, pick up a copy of that record so that, uh, we can keep traveling and doing what we do. Keep talking to beautiful people like yourself. So, oh, you're way too kind, sir. We'll be seeing you in September. Don't you worry about that. With the support of being as an ocean over here in the UK. Yeah, you're so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. Yeah, yeah it's you're impactful. So... <laughs> you're impactful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yeah. But, thank you guys. Oh. Thank you guys so much. We had we. This was a lot of fun and um, very enjoyable and. Can't wait to see you guys. It's gonna be cool to meet. And um you know, 100%. um, do you guys do you guys drink booze? Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm married with kids, of course yeah. I drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have depression, so yes. Oh I can't laugh for that. It's like <laughs> I know, sorry, sorry, I had to I, I had I had to take that from my bad. <laughs> I was kidding. Yeah, no, I just, I just drink because it's fun, you know. <laughs> but I, I seriously, on a serious note, I wish you all the best with the new album. Yeah. Like, I'm so excited for the world to hear it because it's sensational. And I awesome. think it's great, and I think it's going to melt a lot of faces, and people are going to love it. Thank you um, so much. But no, thank you. But we definitely need to do this again <laughs> where we're not, we're not time constrained because it'd be, I think, great. we'll have a lot of fun. So yeah, definitely, absolutely. Whenever you guys want, we're, we'll be there amazing perfect boys have an absolutely amazing rest of your day and good luck with the interviews and we'll speak to you soon cool thank you take care guys see you later, 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 later. bye
Bye bye. What a fucking fantastic interview. This one, so good. And this band are so good. Everyone, go check out Of Virtue right now. Yeah, they're definitely up there on my list of like, it's definitely a Tom band. Like, just for oh, yeah. me, it's like everything about it was like, yeah, yeah, catchy choruses, bit of melodic, bit of melody, bit of screaming, perfect, 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 tick, 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 tick. Uh, so, yeah, the brand new album moment is out on the 29th of September. So, make sure you get your copy now. Pre order it. They've got some sexy t shirts, sexy hoodies, and sexy vinyl. You need to get all over that shit. And if you if you can see them, this, they're playing Birmingham Saturday, tomorrow night, Saturday night, and they're playing Swansea on Sunday. So, if you're in those other areas, go and get tickets and go and see them now. You will not regret it. But, boys, thank you so much for joining us. We massively appreciate it. And we really, really hope that you guys enjoyed listening to it as much as we did recording it. Oh, Jay, what can we say for the okay. 100th episode, 100th edition? It's, it's nuts that we're here. Bonkers, absolutely bonkers that we've got to 100. Nuts. It's great. I love it. It's absolutely amazing. The fact that we've still got shit to talk about. I know, yeah. We're not <laughs> sick of each other yet. It's great. Yeah, I know, it's absolutely... Well, well, well I, I was waiting yeah, for that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're not bored of each other. No, I'm joking. Like it's it's been amazing, man. Like even if, you know, to, I I want to say right off the bat, right here, right now. So I was trying to get my notes out, ready for the show. <laughs> like, but thank you to everyone that's been with us. If you've been with us since the bar fight days or the Chronicles before days, or even from the first edition of the Chronicles of, it means the absolute world that you've taken time out of your you know your personal lives and your busy schedules to you know listen and laugh away or take the piss out of us or be like god that shit or whatever whatever you've done the fact that you've taken time to listen to us means the world and thank you so much to everyone everyone that's participated in jamie's challenges everyone that loves the treaches everyone that listens to the show if it be for a minute or a hundred you're a legend you're an absolute legend and thank you so much it's yeah. it's been great so absolutely are and don't just mention the treaches and my challenge mister your journal entries anyone that has a good old laugh at those damn right because they are absolutely hilarious and i've forgotten how many times you've broken me over these past 100 editions <laughs> with those fucking journal entries but just to piggyback what tom says a massive thing if you've listened to one episode if you've listened to what episode what am i about if you listen to one edition if you listen to all 100 editions a massive thank you to the from the bottom of our hearts it means the absolute world. And I, yeah, I love this so much. Yeah, it's great. It's really great. You know, 100 editions in, and we've been to Bloodstock twice, uh, 2000 <laughs> Trees. I flew to Ireland to um, interview for the Dublin Cross, which is out in cinemas right now. If you're any Irish this is in, go and see Dublin Cross right now. Uh, it's in your area. It's in your area. Sell it out. Just go and sell it out and go and enjoy it. It's a great film. Um, you know, 100 editions in and get to do all that is just insane. It's just absolutely insane. So it really it's is. Great. And but, there's so much more to come, boys and girls. There is. Oh, there is. There um, is. So a hundred editions in, Jay, and I've got a really I've got a really big question I want to ask you. And it's it's been on my mind a lot this past couple of days, which is I want to know what is three sevenths chicken, two thirds cat, and two fourths goat. Wait, what I'm trying to work out the maths of this. I, All right, what? okay. So you it's... want to go again, yeah? I want to know, Jamie Westwood, right here, right now, okay. what is three-sevenths chicken, two-thirds <laughs> cat, and two-fourths goat? I was going to say Findus lasagna, but that was horse, so I have no idea. You want to know what it is? Go on, then. I'll give, I'll give people listening about five more seconds, just in case they're trying to work out for themselves, and I'll give you the answer in three, two, one. Have you got it? It's Chicago, Jamie. <laughs> Three sevenths chicken, C H I. Oh, fuck. Two sake. thirds cat, oh. C A. <laughs> and two fourths goat, G O. <laughs> oh, for Christ's sake. <sighs> Hasn't Chicago been for enough lately? They've already lost their wrestling hero. Only joking. <laughs> Who, sorry? CM Punk being fired. Who's that? No, oh, yeah. joking. We I'm... don't talk of him anymore. <laughs> We don't, I did, I did, you know, there's been so much talk over the news and there's been so much talk over dirt sheets and God knows what else. He just, uh, you know, Kevin Nash talked about how he clearly needs help. Something, you know, I don't want to go into the nitty gritty of it. We're not a wrestling podcast. We are wrestling fans, but we're not a wrestling podcast. So I don't want to start sitting here and talk about CM Punk for five hours. Um, but 
the storyline was stupid. He came back with the exact same shit he's been doing for the past God knows how many years, and I'm just not interested. So, you know, whatever. Let's move on. So, I will say one thing. I can't believe that your city is now bankrupt. Is it? Yeah, got announced today. Do you not keep up with the Birmingham news? Birmingham City People Council today announced news. that it's, bank- it's bankrupt. I did not see that. Birmingham's oh. got no money. Zero. Nothing. Nada. Zilch. Probably spent it all on fucking roadworks. That's why. No, uh, haven't you got a massive fucking bull for some random reason in your train station? We do have a very large bull, but I imagine that's paid for by the Olympic Committee to be fair. I don't know. Don't, don't ask me about politics. Come on. I barely should well, manage it's not, my own it's life. Not, it's just no. I just thought it's nuts. Like the the, no, I didn't the, know that. the yeah, crazy. The city's bankrupt. So IRZ has been sold now. <laughs> it's going to make us all our debt money back. Do you reckon? Do you reckon he'll start appearing in adverts? And you're like, what the fuck? Like local adverts. <laughs> I meant the bull, but no, him as well. Yeah, the actual Aussie Osborne. Oh, the bull's called Aussie. Yeah, that's the name of the bull, Aussie. Oh my days! Anyway, that went to a public um, vote, sir. That was voted by the citizens of Birmingham. The, the what of Birmingham, sorry? <laughs> Citizens. Oh, there we are. Um, <laughs> do you know what? I, I had a really random ass thought as well this past week, which was, you know how we look at shit or bins or gone off food and go, by God, that is absolutely rancid and smells disgusting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I wonder if flies and beetles and people that love that sort of thing look at flowers and grass and clean air and go, oh, my God, it's fucking disgusting. That is, is, do you know what I mean? You mean like, weirdly? There's obviously whatever created the dung beetle that loves just to push balls of shit around to live in or attract mates with or whatever, the random mister. I love that. The fact is, like, we've got horses, giraffes, elephants, cats, dogs, lovely. We, but we need something to move the poo. <laughs> Who's going to move the poo? Ah, we'll make a beetle for that to push it with his hind legs. And then we'll try and attract mates with a massive ball of shit. Um. But obviously, flies love bins, and like your flies are always flying around going, like, eh, whatever they do. But they always love hovering around plates with food on or bins. It's a Don't really think? good point. I want to know. Go near flowers yeah. and then go, oh, God, that smells horrendous. No, <laughs> I need to be in someone's house hitting loads of panes of glass for no reason and flying in their bin. <laughs> Let me I in. I, I need mean. your rubbish, sir. Yeah. <laughs> really? That's a really good question. No, I've, I've never heard that question before. I do wonder, because they do there's seem to some... love terrible smells, yeah. Yeah, there's probably some sort of scientific person that's just going, God, these guys are idiots. <laughs> probably, or Claire. Yeah. <laughs> Is Claire upset on her dung beetle and fly knowledge? Is <laughs> well, we'll soon find out which listens to this. <laughs> Claire's there like, oh, God, fucking pathetic. Have you seen the state of these two? A hundred years in, they didn't know their beetle knowledge. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. But I'm, it's just it's just like hit hit me. I wanted to. I don't know. <laughs> I'd just like to know what was going through your mind when you thought of that. To be honest, <laughs> because I was emptying my bin out on Saturday, <laughs> um, and there was just a fly around it, and I was like, I wonder <laughs> if I bring this lovely scented lemon towards you, if you're going to fly away from me. Hmm, <laughs> citrus. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> you never like, see them around nice smelling things so I reckon you're onto something to be honest I've got to be haven't I I reckon you are mm, interesting but there we are but that's what I brought this week because I thought 100th edition there's probably going to be like fuck loads of things we want to reminisce and all that sort of crap but then I thought maybe we should just give them just a proper show like always a bit, of the, a bit of both I think we should have a little bit of a reminisce you know it is 100 editions are there any standout moments to you sir over the past 100 editions um, I mean, I didn't really, to be honest with you, take the time to think about it. Um, I just <laughs> I just think it's really cool that, you know, we've been invited to Ireland. We've been invited to Bloodstock twice, even though we, I know we've had to apply. Um, being associated with the Sofa Lancaster Foundation, I think it's quite a big one. Um, being sponsored by Stay Cozy Clothing, I think it's another big one as well. It's just, yeah, it's... It's one of those things where when we first started out, I was like, it's going to be a bit of a laugh. No one's going to give a shit. Uh, that's fine. I'm happy with that. It's just us chatting and talking bullshit for however long. Do you know what I mean? And now we've hit that stair where we're like, Jesus Christ, you know, we've had some stellar guests <laughs> and whatnot. So it's, you know, I think just the whole thing as a whole has just been unreal, to be quite honest with you. I agree. There, there never seems to have been a down moment 
I know we're not like the biggest fucking Joe Rogan podcasters in the world, but we've never had a bad guest. Like we've never had a guest where you come off and we've gone, that was a tough slug, weren't it? And I'm not just saying that because we're on here. All our guests have been amazing. Like we've done some incredible things like you just listed there. Like we've hosted a gig. We're hosting another one later this year. We've done some insane things with this little engine that could, you know, I, I fucking love it. It's incredible. And like you say, the people we've spoken to, childhood heroes we've got to speak to. We've got to speak to little Nell Campbell from Rocky Horror Picture Show, for Christ's sake. Michael Jackson's guitarist. Like, nuts, nuts people that I never thought I'd get a chance to speak to in my life. Yeah, it's, it's great. It is great. I love. I enjoy it. And I can't wait to do another 100 editions. You know, who knows where we're going to be in another two years. It's two years old, the show, isn't it? So it is, just it? over. Yeah. Um, you know, who knows where it'll be another two years' time. So it's it yeah, it, it just blows my mind, man. And it, I don't I'm like I said, I'm just really thankful to everybody that invests their time in us, that listens to us, that comes on the show, that's like, you know, like that moment of bloodstock, that one moment of bloodstock when I hit his Jim. We bumped into Jim from yeah. who was doing that documentary for Roadrunner Records, and he was like, God, I love your show. And it's like, hello, mate, love to meet you. Like just <laughs> shit like that. Like that I've always I've always wanted that to happen once. That was yeah. it. I don't mind it. Yeah, just just the one time. I'm happy with that now. I can die happy. All life is complete. It's yeah. It's just I don't want to sit here and suck our own cocks for an hour. I'm no. sure people this. You know, just Christ, boys, you'll just crack on with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, you know, we we get it. You've got a show. Wow, <laughs> who doesn't? <laughs> to be fair, these days, right? Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> Um, have you brought anything you want to bring before I, I haven't actually I'm not, nothing's really come to my brain this week no. that's fine how are you anyway I'm very well I'm fucking hot but other than that yeah I'm, I'm very well just got back from work but yeah yeah it's been a productive are you day. even British if you complain about the weather fair point yeah but this is too hot man I can't deal with this <laughs> Yeah, but apparently global warming is not a thing. Global boiling is a thing, yeah. but global warming, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is absolutely mental. As a ginger, like, I I don't know. I mean, I live in a top floor flat. I'm not, again, I'm not trying to say that my cock's bigger than yours, but, like, I live in a top floor apartment flat. And I, th- I thought on the riverfront, I might at least have some breeze, but it's been 35 yeah. degrees in here the past two days. And it's just been, it's horrible. It's literally horrible. There, there is no breeze. That's the worst part. I was doing out doing the garden this morning. I was just like, oh, give me some wind. Just a little bit of wind, please. No, not. Yeah. Kind of a scary time, I think, more than else as well, that you get moments in the middle of set, in the start of September where all of a sudden summer goes, you can have summer for a week. So we'll do all the, all the three months in one week. And you're like, what? What do you mean? And then, Here's June, July and August weather. Hey, you are, enjoy. No, 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 I don't think you can. No, 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 you've gone to your summer. Have your fucking summer, bricks. <laughs> I don't know, you fucking hate them, but I feel a little bit sorry for the kids as well because they're now going back to school when the good weather starts. They've just had their six weeks holiday and bullshit rain. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. It's... But yeah, it, it's a bit intense. I'm not going to lie. Um, but there we are. It's a sweaty 100th edition. But yeah, how are you, my friend? Well, funnily enough, Jamie, funny you should ask. I'm sweating my bollocks off. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's great, though. I, I, even in the nighttime recording, I thought, you know, past 11, this would be beautiful. We'd be absolutely fine. We're still here, like, it's like 26 still, and it's 11 p.m. Or it's even, like, fucking, it's half past 11. Half 11. And you're just going, like, how is it this hot at this time? What is going Should we just complain about weather for the whole hour? Let's just yeah, fucking okay. complain about weather for the entire show. <laughs> It's the like, 100 degrees episode. <laughs> yeah. There you go, Virtue. You've had your interview. Now we're going to talk about weather for the next hour. <laughs> um, but no, boys, I'm. this week is absolutely massive um, in the sense of the Rugby World Cup starts on Friday. And wow. I don't think I've ever been so like, I don't know how to describe the emotion, how I'm feeling. Um, it's nuts. Like the pride I feel for for my country and for my boys playing is just it's just insane. And we start the campaign off against the world champions, and I'm like, okay, cool, <laughs> hooray! <laughs> <laughs> so South Africa first on Sunday, wonderful. Um, and I just deep like the sense of part of me is like it's going to be fucking tough game, and they're probably going to beat us. But then it, it, there's a, the, the patriotic part of me. It's like, I want to cause the biggest upset of the tournament three days in. It's what I want to do. Yeah. Or I'd be, I always want to turn up and go, right, 
world champions done next so i mean it'd be <laughs> great it'd be fucking great so annoyingly they sort their world cups out like three years before the tournament on the standings and back then we were about eighth or not we were doing really shit now we're not so we have south africa who are top uh who are the um second in the world but they're champions we have ireland who were best in the world in our group as well but only two oh, qualifies so you're like oh it's gonna be it's gonna be intense we have south africa first and ireland last so it's, oh, it's jesus Christ. I know it's just all to play for. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be unbelievable. It's just gonna be unbelievable, and I'm so excited for it. I'm here for it. And I'm ready, and I'm willing to go. And there'll be a lot of Scotland posts on social media. So I'm really sorry for anybody who actually knows me personally. I do apologise. Uh, but my plug, my my Facebook and Instagram is literally either podcast or Scotland. That's literally all it is. So accurate. yeah. But also Scotland football play this weekend as well, and a European qualifier for football. So I'm a bit like, oh my ass. Uh, this is going to be a huge weekend, so I'm I'm just I'm just buzzing, Jane, more than anything else. Still support like a normal football team. I know you used to be a Liverpool fan, but you never mention it anymore. So no, but I because I, I I gave up with that what, 10, 12 years ago. Yeah, I thought you might have. I mean, it, was it was a while ago. ago. Yeah. Um, I follow my, I follow my hometown now, Aberdeen Aberdeen Football Club. So that makes sense. Um, yeah, and I, I watch that, but it's it's tough being an Aberdeen fan, but like. Football, I've, I've, I love rugby more than anything else now. Like football was my thing back in the day, but as I got older, I kind of, I don't know, I just fell out of love with it. So, um, yeah, so there we are. There we are. How was your holiday, by the way? It was very nice. It went way too fucking fast. But no, it was really nice. Did it went swimming quite a lot. Um, went to the oh, beach one of the days. I'm so, if they didn't want to wish you'd gone this week so you could swim a lot, a lot now. But. Yeah, I know. Like the day we went home, it was scorching heat and Saturday was scorching. I'm so sunburnt from Saturday because my dumb ass, we were sat on the beach for hours and then I went, oh shit, yeah, yeah. didn't put any sun lotion on. But I felt fine. And then when I got back to the caravan later that night, I was like, ah, you could boil an egg on me. Like put my bag on to go to work yesterday. I was like, ah, my shoulders, ow, my fucking shoulders. But, but my fault. You get, you get the peel. You, you get, get the peel, peel. soon. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I'm so jealous to get the peel. I do get the peel. And Olivia's very excited for her to get the peel because she's just like her dad and she's got a thing for picking. So last when we went to Spain and I was picking skin, she'd literally sit next to me on the sofa and she'd start picking at it. So she's very excited when I start to peel because she's a fucking weirdo. Is that weird? Is that odd? See, I say it's odd and she's a weirdo, but I'm also looking forward to it. So can no, I say but that's that? not we- that's not weird because it's your own body. Yeah, true. If you want to, pick, you know what I mean. I I love it when I burn and shit. I'm like, not obviously all the time, but I'm no. like, oh my god. The during when I did my leg in at trees, and it was like, but I had it out all day. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> when it came to the peel, Jay, when I pulled it, it literally sounded like I was ripping paper in half. What? That's so. Sad. That's how. That's how badly oh. it burnt me. It was really sad. It was so satisfying, but <laughs> I was also like, that's really concerning. <laughs> That my skin sounds like I'm ripping paper. Like it was that loud. So I was like, okay, maybe that's not good. Maybe that's not a good thing. No, but I know what you mean though. It is your own skin. But at the same time, like when Becky peels and I see someone, I'm like, oh, 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 definitely so, think we should move on from this conversation. Yeah, I think we definitely be quiet. should. Yeah, we're removing so, skin now. We've hit a weird point at the door. So you've had a good holiday, yeah? So yeah, I had a very nice holiday. Yeah, it's, like I said, just went way too fast. Lots of swimming. Um, spent a day on the beach and yeah, it was just nice and relaxing to be fair. It was really nice. Played a couple of rounds of crazy golf. You, you know, you gotta do that when you go down to the seaside. Yeah, it was good. Good good time. Nice nice to get away. Just, yeah. Do you, reckon, do you reckon Australians get livid by the fact that we call it a seaside and not a beach? Possibly. Do you reckon Australians are there going, fucking hell, mate, you wanna go down to the seaside? You're like, fucking no, mate, you wanna go down to the beach. What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> fucking seaside, are you all right? <laughs> Does any other country call it the seaside, or is that like the most British know. thing ever? It's definitely a British thing. I can't but imagine. This, the sea's only at the side when you're side on. So how does it That's work? That's a good point, actually. But they do also call it the seafront. Hmm. Do they? Who calls it that? I've heard it called the seafront. Do you know the bit like, the, oh, how do I word this? Like where the pier is, and you know, you walk across that bit there. I've heard that referred to as the seafront. Okay, maybe it's just maybe. me then. Maybe. I'll be, I can't imagine some American going, oh my God, I'm going to go down to Miami Seaside. Yeah, it's definitely, it's got to be yeah. a British thing. <laughs> it's got to be, 100%. <laughs> it's definitely got to be. But how about you, sir? What have you been up to in this past week? Well, have you done anything else other than your holiday? 
no, not really. Just work and the holiday. And then tomorrow it's my boy's 14th birthday. So I'm very excited to go see him for his birthday. But yeah, I mean, nothing nothing else. I've always Does that enjoyed. freak you out? A little bit. Yeah, I was thinking about it earlier. I was like, how the fuck is he 14? And because you gave birth yeah, 14 years ago? Yeah, here we go. Well, I didn't give birth. But yes. Well... <laughs> I mean, you know, it's what it's one of those things. I was told to care about this earlier, actually, about when people are like, "Oh, they grow up too fast." It's like, but that's just how I. I what do you want to grow? You want to grow too slow? I, I don't understand exactly no. what you mean. Oh, my my little baby's growing. I don't don't grow too quickly. Like, but that's just how time works. Yes, I, it, 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 I don't know. It really annoys me. I don't know why. Am I cynical? Why. My old is that is that what it is? Are you cynical? Well, let's move on. Yes. And- <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, other than absolutely cooking and roasting, like I literally, my T-shirt is stuck to me now. All right. Uh, <laughs> hooray! Black things! Yeah. Um, yeah, the week's something too bad, man. Uh, I'm just trying to think now, like really quickly. I've watched a bit of Walking Dead because uh, I'm so slowly getting through it. Um, like Orville, I've stopped. Um, I got Keris on Loki and I... I we're halfway through, and I was like, I don't remember being this boring. Is it because I've seen it already, do you reckon? Okay. It just seems to be, just seems to not be going anywhere. And I was like, I don't remember, I, I remember really enjoying this. What's going on? Um, but I wonder if it's because I've seen it already. Um, it's our two-year anniversary tomorrow, so uh, we got that going on, um, which is, you know, I know how time works, but that's blown my mind a little bit. It's been two years already. Um, I was going back to my phone going, like, fucking hell, I've done so much. I was going to say, it feels like you've been together longer. Yeah, no, two years tomorrow. Um, but we went out on Sunday. We went uh, walking down the Newport wetlands. Um, and it was like, discuss- I, again, like you, I thought put some cream on, but luckily I didn't burn, oddly. Um, but obviously there's quite a bit of few shady areas. So it was quite nice. Um, but it was this weird, I, I, he must have had autism or difficulties or something because he kept, it was really weird. I thought he was going to attack me at one point. We were walking, and you hear like like footsteps really quick. And I was like, so I turned, and he was like, "Excuse me," and he like just run past. And I was like, "That's really weird." But then he'd stop and wait. We'd walk off again, and all of a sudden, it happened. It happened like three or four times, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" And then he was gone, and then that was it. And I was like, "Oh, such a weird." You clearly like to run past people. (laughs) Clearly. But Sunday night, we went to watch Busted at the Cardiff International yeah. Arena. Oh, sorry, the Utility Arena, or whatever it's called now. Um, classic Welsh people is this. It's too much of CIA to me. Um, but <laughs> it was absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah. Really good. And you're in for a fucking treat. I was going to say, I'm seeing them Saturday, and I'm very excited. You're in for an absolute treat. When this is out, you're seeing them tomorrow night. Um I remember, without giving anything away, I saw a guy on FaceTime to, on a song. I won't tell you what song it is. On a song. I was like, but it's funny as hell because I was literally, this guy is phone in the air. So mm-hmm. everyone can see this guy, like this, just this, this face on his phone going like, yeah, that love and life. That was really fucking funny. Um, what I found really weird was the support bands had a music video come on first. And then they came out, and I was like, "That's odd. That's weird." I suppose because no one knows who they are is my assumption. Everyone knows Hanson. That's what I'm most excited for. They didn't fucking turn up to us, did they? Oh, what? They weren't. On, they weren't there. They weren't. They weren't ready. They weren't on the tour yet when we saw them. Oh, oh God, fucking hell! I thought you meant they dropped out of tour, and I was gonna cry a little bit. Then. No, they weren't on. They weren't on our, on our night. So oh, we okay. had two two completely random unknown people. Oh. Um but all I'll say is the first band opened with a cover and I is that a good shout? Not to open with, no. No, but there we are. That's that's all I'm saying. Um busted though, you'll you'll just love it. You'll just love it. And I reckon you'll just lose your mind the entire time, lose your voice. So probably. I'm very excited. Um, yes, yeah, so that was great. Um, I've been like, really trying to fucking catch up with wrestling, like massively. I still haven't seen all out. I still haven't seen payback. I still haven't got to Bray Wyatt SmackDown yet. So you know, you know it's it's because TNT aren't showing it anymore for some weird ass fucking reason. Huh. So yeah, I think I think someone's thrown his toys at the pram because TNT is related to AEW. So 
Yeah, stupid fucking prick. Anyway, just just go away now. Just go away. Just go away. That's all we need to do. Is just go away. You've had your time. Off you fuck. Anyway, I won't get so angry about that anymore. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm just looking forward to the Rugby World Cup. Starts on Friday. Um, the opening game is France, New Zealand, which is going to be all sorts of delicious. I cannot stress to you the third best in the world versus the fourth best in the world is like, oh my God. Um, so that's going to be absolutely glorious. Obviously, Scotland play on uh, Friday in the football and Sunday in the rugby. And I'm just buzzing. I'm just buzzing for it. And I'll see the NFL's back this Sunday as well. So I'm just oh, like, well, God. what more could you ask for? What more could you fucking ask for? A weekend of sports for Mr. Stevens. That's why I blocked all the Sundays out. I was like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> no shows, no recordings on Sunday. Thank you, boys. But I do know that Callum has spoiled everybody. So we better hear from oh, Steve yes. of Clothing. All right. Is this thing on? Well, howdy doody, everybody. This is Braden Barry from Say We Can Fly, founder of Stay Cozy Clothing. Your one-stop shop for the coziest, most fashionable hoodies, t-shirts, and more. Gorsh, Mickey. That's right, folks. And we're proud to say that we are now sponsoring... The Chronicles of Podcast. Ouch. Hosted by Tom and Jamie. <laughs> like, you can get 10% off, man. That's right, Shaggy. Just use the special code, the Chronicles at checkout. Oh, boy. Oh. I've said it once, and I'll say it twice. i said it thrice. i said it fourth and fifth. <laughs> Best advert ever. <laughs> I, you know, oh, I, I missed a trick there. I should have said it once, said it a hundred times. Oh. Never mind. Never mind. I'll let it that first bit out. The ship, the, ship no, no. the ship has sailed, Jamie. <laughs> the ship has sailed. Let it go. Let it ride into the sunset. Um, or sand to sunset at this point. You know what I mean? I'm absolutely gutted about it. Never mind. But it's time for your favorite segment of the week. Oh, yeah, baby. For the hundredth time. It's time for Callum Streetchins. Do you want to know something? Callum will be able to tell you. And Callum Streetchins. It's cereal soup. Ooh. It's everybody's favourite segment of the week. And we know he's here to treat the nation once again, but because it's the 100th edition, he's come to treat you quite a fair few times, boys and girls. Strap oh, oh, yourselves yes. in for this one. Jamie, what is Callum treating us this week? First of all, I just wanted to say congratulations on 100 episodes. It's been an absolute pleasure being a part of the show. Um, you know, it's it's great that people can hear my ramblings across the world. So um, here's to 100 more. Congrats, boys. What an absolute bloody beautiful human. Absolutely oh. wonderful. Thank you so much, Cal, for praying that. That just means the world to us. Oh, I didn't know there could be a special message there because we don't pray this to these. That was sweet. I like that. <laughs> But Jamie, what is Callum drinking as in? <laughs> it's only confetti when it's in the air. When it hits the ground, it's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> that could be like a riddle or something, couldn't it? It really could, actually. When I'm, one thing when I'm thrown, <laughs> two things when I'm on the floor. I don't know. I don't really do riddles. It has to, I feel like I have that certain je ne sais doesn't it, when you spoon and do riddles. I am lost, but then I was found. Oh, what am I? <laughs> What's funny is, whenever I go to weddings and I see it all like trodden into the ground and in the grass and stuff, I always think, I feel sorry for the poor bastard that's got to clean that up. So he's oh, like, one piece of confetti, <laughs> two pieces. <laughs> oh, fuck it, I've got the other bush as well. And it's thorny. <laughs> ah, one confetti. Ah. <laughs> I don't know why they're like Uncle Fester. <laughs> Uncle Finster. Was it Finster? It's Finster. No, Finster's from Power Rangers. Yes, yes. I, for, for ages I've been going, Uncle Finster. For some no reason whatsoever. It's obviously Uncle Fester. <laughs> I think I need to go to bed, Jamie. I'm not going to lie. Possibly. <laughs> Our brains have melted away. <laughs> but that's such a good point. I, ne- I never thought about that. I just go, Way! cool, let's fuck off then. Yeah. I, bet the, I, bet, I bet the vicar's like, you... Bastard. Yes. Sorry, I have sinned. I have sinned. Sorry if I have sinned. Yeah, you absolute mother hubbards. <laughs> Is it, oh, you've got some in your hair. Oh. What do you do with the rice? That is, yeah, I Is think it, that's how it that started thing? or something. I think it was a really But does it kill birds or something? Because it expands in birds' socks? Uh, something like that. I don't know. 
I'd love it if someone's very like, I couldn't afford rice, so I got rice pudding. <laughs> you've, ru- you've ruined my fucking dress, you prick. I, d- I couldn't, I just, I started to throw something. You've knocked out the group, you threw the tin at his head. <laughs> Ambrosia. <laughs> if that was the advert, that'd be fucking amazing. <laughs> Have you been knocked out by one of our tins? Ambrosia. <laughs> oh, I love it. And Jamie, let's continue. What else is Callum teaching us this week? The weakest part for most mammals is the neck. Yet geese are surprisingly confident considering they're mostly neck. <laughs> oh, geese, man. Oh. Fucking hell. They're it's like terrifying. We talked about <laughs> seagulls earlier with chicks last week, and now that uh, geese are like, you, you're walking a lovely stroll through the park. What a beautiful summer's day in the middle of September. It's 20 degrees, you know. Lovely stuff. What the fuck is that? It's a what? It's a goose. Oh, shit. The goose like, come on, you prick. Fucking come on, then. I'll go 12 rounds with you. I could be so fucking terrifying. terrifying. I like territory. It's because of territory, aren't they? It's obviously, it's almost like they're hiding something they shouldn't have. <laughs> like mob bosses. <laughs> yeah, you know how like Jews are looking for gold and that sort of thing. I bet, I bet a geese are there going like, he, he, he fucking knows. He knows. Shit. Let's gang, let's gang up. Let's get all of it. Let's fucking gang up and in the prick. Oh, dude, what are you fucking doing on my piece of pass? <laughs> That's my love red, song. you bastard. <laughs> They've written goose on there. And, Come on, then. Fuck it up. Tyson Fury's never lost a box. I don't think he's ever lost a box match as far as I'm aware. Put a goose in there. Everyone would be fucked. He'd be fucking terrible. He'd be running. That's what he'd be doing. He'd be running for his life. But I, yeah, I do wonder why they've got so much confidence for a bird. Yeah. And, and he's right. They have got a lot of neck. Yeah, I, right. I, I reckon. I reckon that there's obviously some, some goose mafia we don't know about. <laughs> and they're, hi- they're hiding all the goods. So they've got the bodies under the water. It's like, oh shit, Daryl's found it. It's Daryl. He fucking knows. Uh, yeah. <laughs> who, who told the swans? Who told the swans? <laughs> <laughs> swans are the police of the, of the uh, bird world. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a mole in our clan. There's a mole. Where's it come from? I don't know. It came from underground, I think. Oh, oh, that's awful. Fuck so. say, Jesus Christ. Boo. Boo. <laughs> that was Get my level off. of joke. Get him off. Get him off. <laughs> and welcome to the first Chronicles of Podcast. <laughs> I'm your host, Jamie Westwood. <laughs> Just me now. Yeah. We, oh. We've had to let Tom go. It was a, it was an absolute... But when you're giving awful jokes like that, they're meant for the journals, Tom, <laughs> not for Callum's teachings. How dare you decredit and, you know, besmirch Callum like this, you bastard. Uh-huh. Anyway, anyway, we anyway. shall continue. What else, Jamie, is Callum teaching us this week? Thinking you had one last bite of something until realising that you'd already eaten it is one of the most disappointing feelings. Oh, Oh, so is heartbreaking. Oh. Especially when you get like a takeaway and you're like, oh my God, this is like a KFC or a Burger King and you're just eating away and you're like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. And then you go, oh, I can't wait for that. Oh. oh, I've already, oh, okay. I, did, I guess that's, I guess that was, <laughs> never mind. Yeah. There's been a moment now. I was in, Na- oh, I can't remember where I went out. I went out with my brother and two sisters. The four of us went out for Nando's and I think I have like double pit of chicken or so I can't remember what I had. It was this is years ago. And I was eating la nan nan. And I sat there like, oh, that was really tasty. I really enjoyed that food. Completely forgetting I hadn't touched my peri peri chips yet. Oh. So I was just like, I know. I I'd ha- I'd, I'd literally, this is the and, and we pissed ourselves about 20, 25 minutes. It might be you had to have been there kind of moment. But I was literally like sat there going, Oh, I'm really good at fish. That was really nice. Looked down and went, oh, oh chips. <laughs> Literally like that. <laughs> because I was so surprised they were still there. <laughs> Makes it funny as I could picture it because I know you and it makes it even better. <laughs> oh my god, my sisters were they were dead. Like I I don't think they ever recovered. I think they're still la- sat there laughing now in the middle of fucking Cheltenham Town Centre. It was it was absolutely it was an amazing but I I it's because <laughs> I am a Hoover. I went into yes. dustbin, so just food's like, no, and that was enjoyable. I really enjoyed that. So I never <laughs> expected to see food in front of me. It was so funny. I, but I Callum, also... you are 
Go on. I was gonna say, I also find it happens with drink. It happens to me quite often. Like, I'll be really hot, so I've got a cold drink, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to have another bit. Oh, I finished it. I forgot I finished it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with, like, milkshake or something. Yes. Oh, it's the worst. Especially if you've made, like, the most banging cup of tea in the world or banging coffee oh. ever. And you're getting through it like, oh, it's just absolute. And you put it up, but then you forget you've made one. And you're like, crack it on. And you go, oh my God, I still got tea. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. No. Was... And then nothing ever tastes the same again. You never no. make it like that ever again. Or I hate those moments. The utter betrayal is when you put it down, forget about it, and you go, oh, I've got tea. Go to drink it. And it's cold. Yeah. And you can't microwave it. It tastes like shit. No. no. Heartbreaking. But Jamie. We continue. We do continue. What else is Callum treating us? This week you're spoiled, the boys and girls. It's weird that Ariel from The Little Mermaid didn't know what a fork was or how to use it, considering her dad carries one round with him all the time. <laughs> now, I could totally see people were like, actually, that's a trident. I yes. can totally see that happening, but still, that's a massive fucking fork. I don't get, yeah, it's still a massive fork or a job in great. Hot I, is it what? That's what um, Ariel's mate calls the fork. It's a, it's a dingle hopper. She uses it to brush her hair. Yeah. A dingle hopper. Sorry. Okay, there we are then. Yeah. Um, I would find it so funny if he, what's his name? In Trident. It's actually Trident. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> um, I am what I have. Um, I'd love it if he was like, fuck, I'm starving. Look, selfish went. <laughs> Daddy, what are you doing? I'm starving, Ariel. What's wrong with you? They're, they're all friends with fish down there. What the fuck do they eat? Well, exactly. <laughs> I don't, you want to stay for <laughs> just pass through the water or something. Just passes through and they go, oh, it was absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> or, that, was, that was gourmet. That was gourmet, I tell you. Vintage, yes. <laughs> But I love the idea. Like, Sebastian walks in, he's like, must be a lobster. <laughs> Definitely under the, you're fucking under my belly now, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> or I will definitely see myself out now. You're two for two this week. Fucking uh, Jesus, great. It's because it's, it's past my joke time, that's why. <laughs> it's past time my brain's at full capacity. Now we're hitting that point where I'm, like, lulling. So it's like it's like jokes going at, like, dad speed. <laughs> dad speed. <laughs> So I, like, oh, uh, yeah, uh, that was, uh, it's the punchline, uh, oh, whatever. <laughs> but it is a very good point, Cal. It is a very good point that I'll definitely be pointing out tomorrow uh, when Keris, because the Little Mermaid, the live action comes on Disney Plus tomorrow. So oh, I'm going to be, yeah, so we'll be, I think she wants to watch it. So I'm going to say the exact same thing, like, oh, doesn't, uh, I don't carry one of those around, a massive fucking gold one. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, we're going to make so many Disney fans angry with this one. So doesn't she <laughs> collect uh, collect loads of shit as well? So how does she yes. not know what it is? I don't know. I think she collects human things, but doesn't really know what they are. She just likes them because they're human things. And then she asks okay. a seagull friend what they are. I tried to remember. I never got the Little Mermaid. I've never understood the love for it. Well, there we are then. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um. But finally, Jamie, what else has Callum decided to treat us for the 100th edition this week? Somewhere out there, it's likely that someone has actually fallen on an object and got it stuck in their butt, but nobody believed them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I've never oh, thought of it that way. No, no, me. I've never thought. I, 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 oh yeah, of course you fucking did. Yeah. Of course you. Fu- yeah, yeah, yeah. You fell on it. Yeah. Oh, it's like, oh yes, absolutely. We'll give you the best treatment possible, and then they go away, like, <laughs> you know, they're all like, like, you know, like like a com- comedy joke, like something, like, and then they walk back in, like, yes, absolutely, we will definitely be able to, like, so that for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just thinking, I'm a little bit disappointed in myself. The fact I worked, I work as a porter. I did, in an A&E department for so long, and I never once asked anyone if they had someone come in with something violently inserted up their anus. Hmm. I feel like I should have asked but, someone. No, but, I, I mean, know. do you really want to be doing that in your sort of profession? I mean, maybe a professional capacity that you want to go up to somebody random? I mean, as, well, I as know, you go... This is me. <laughs> they're not They're not allowed to tell you, are they? That's Okay, this is a live scoop here. <laughs> scoop for their name. Do the doctors and nurses tell you? 
they've never aspect. told me personally, but I, feel, I bet they do. Come on, how can they not? Obviously, don't give patients like information, but you guarantee they've got to go. You won't believe what I just had to do. Or, they, they've got to surely. Fucking Slinky Dog, could you believe it? <laughs> fucking Slinky from Toy Story. One bit came out. It took ages with fucking. <laughs> I'd thrown him down the stairs, but that didn't help him. <laughs> Ever that the human would go with him, the dog. Everyone loves a slinky. <laughs> but there has to be. There has to be. But I bet you everyone like, yeah, 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 it was me. Yeah, it was me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, don't worry, Dave. That Rubik's Cube was definitely up there before I fucking, you know. I, I, it, was the, it was on the sofa. It was on the sofa. I sat down and that, that Rubik's Cube. Why was there two? Oh, no reason. <laughs> don't worry about it, Michael. You know what I mean? Don't worry about it. Yeah, it? And a hair, yeah, there was definitely a hairbrush as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it just like scratched me inside. Do you know what I mean? I, I had a massive itch. I wonder if that was the thing. A like someone's trying to scratch itch. something. So, oh, 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 shit. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like when you put a ruin on a cat. So I'm sweating into my eyes. <laughs> so, and it's thinking like an absolute bastard. I can't see. Um, <laughs> But then it's supposed to be like, streaming by the end of this show. <laughs> um, it's definitely getting, it's getting late, Jay. We should better now. Oh, we um, probably should. <laughs> but yeah, I, I bet someone's like, you know how they scratched down a cast, but it's like, uh, like oh, it's got a bit of an itch there. Like, <laughs> fuck. Well, I didn't know I could do no that. One, no one's going to bloody believe me, are they? Bastards. <laughs> Fucking ruler. Fuck. <laughs> One nine nine nine. What's your emergency? Well, it's uh, I had an itch, and now I need an ambulance. Let's just say that, love. I'm trying to measure how long the colon is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Callum! <laughs> Thank you so much for the beautiful <sighs> message and for the five stellar, like oh. absolute stellar treatises for the hundredth oh, edition. Of absolutely, you can't get any better than that. That was absolutely beautiful. <laughs> The only problem is, I now have to follow this. Yes, you do, sir. It's time for Tom's journal. Read it. And welcome to another edition of Tom's journal. Welcome to the 100th Tom's... Well, it's not the 100th Tom's journal because there's been a few for the previous shows. But for this one, this is the 100th edition of Tom's journal. Are you ready, Jamie? Oh, I'm very ready. And this is how we start. What do you get when you mix a penis, a potato, and a boat? Is a dictatorship. Fuck's sake. <laughs> That's how we're starting this week, is it? Okay. Yeah, that, <laughs> we're off to a flyer. We're off <laughs> okay. to a flyer here. Jesus Christ. Interesting fact for you, Jamie. A T-shirt is actually short for Tyrannosaurus shirt. It's because of the short arms. <laughs> that almost got a Jesus Christ and it just became amazing as soon as you threw the short arms coming in there. You never let me finish. Always wait for the joke to finish. Always wait. Super. You're out to jump in then. Shit on me, you little <laughs> bastard. <laughs> so what I did was I asked my therapist who their therapist was. And then went to see them and asked them the same thing until I got to the final boss therapist and defeated them with the train wreck of a life. Point, actually. Like, is it like a... I don't know the word I'm after. Like a train of therapists. Wonder. Things toddlers and I have in common. Okay. Don't want to go to bed? Why get dressed when I can keep playing in my PJs? Lo and behold, I don't wear PJs. I'm very tired, and therefore I hate you. Just five more minutes. I haven't eaten, and I'm hungry, so I'm going to cry about it. Needs cookies and juice to function. Will cry if yelled at. Well, that's actually not right at all, but there we are. Wants to pet every animal I see, and excited about stickers. <laughs> Oh, I miss those innocent days where stickers are like the best thing ever. Oh, dude. Football, <laughs> Premier League sticker book, every every year, get in my face. Even I had some of them, and I didn't give two fucks about football. Oh, they're good. When you got shinies, you just got so erect. You know? Oh, yes. Yeah, they were great. So my friend messaged me. 
Do you want to go out on Friday? I totally would, but I've already got my pyjamas on and everything. Yeah, but it's only Monday. Me, exactly. <laughs> and welcome to being in your 30s. <laughs> oh, yeah. Waiter, I just want to let you all know that kids eat for free. Me, excellent. I'll have a water and my daughter will have the steak and the kids' bud light. <laughs> <laughs> Here's something that might blow your mind a little bit. Why doesn't somebody invent a clear toaster so you can see how you, how toasted your toast is while it's toasting? It's a genius idea. Get that shit on Dragon's Den right now. That should be a thing. Oh my god, why isn't that a thing? That's gonna bug no, me. I, I just want to know why that's not a thing now. <laughs> But does that mean, well, I mean, I put it into the universe now, but it's got to be, surely. I reckon someone's done it and everyone's like, no. Could you make it work, though? We just Because you did, all you'd see is the, the heat bits, wouldn't you? You wouldn't actually be able to see how it's toasting. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. So I just shit on my own journal entry there. Still, it should be invented. Someone should make it work. Someone much cleverer than us, but still, they could make it work. Problem is, I have no idea what bin it is tomorrow. <laughs> Neighbours know that I rely on them to make the first bin move. Yet, not one bin out yet. Bin mind games. Long night ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so true. I haven't got a clue what week is just like a week. <laughs> Fucking amazing. It's weird because it's the one thing I'm really meticulous with. So I'm the person that puts the first bin out. So people go, oh, that's where this is it. Oh, you're one right. of them. That yeah. rare breed in the neighbourhood. <laughs> Because annoyingly, I have, well, no, sorry, I have a great memory. So I'll look at the, the thing, the, the list they give you, the dates, so I sort of remember which one it is. It's really weird. No. So I have a terrible memory. <laughs> so are you ready for a tongue twister? Oh, go on. Go on. If two witches watched two watches, which witch would watch which watch? Ah. Each witch would watch which watch belonged to which... <laughs> Fuck, I got to the end! Damn it, I fucked it! <laughs> you were doing so well! I know. <laughs> Let's start that again really quickly. If two witches watched two watches, which witch would watch which watch? Each witch would watch which watch belonged to which witch's wrist. That's what I was trying to say. Fuck me, that was hard. Bravo, Thank you, sir. sir. Thank you. Bravo. We, we, pers- we persevere. We persevere. Bravo. Oh. <laughs> This, I think, belongs in the Hall of Fame of journal entries, especially for the 100th edition. But I think you're going to fucking hate this. Oh, God. Whoever came up with the word dentures really dropped the ball on calling them substitutes. Superb. Fucking brilliant. That is great. So good. So good. <laughs> Substitutes. <laughs> oh. oh, absolutely brilliant. For all you non-British people out there, here's a very British problem for you. In a restaurant. So are we having starters? It, you have one if you want one. I don't know. What do you think? Honestly, whatever you fancy. I'm easy, really. You have one. Go on. What would you have? Well, I'm not sure. Well, we could share one. Uh, or have one each. Could do. What do you think? <laughs> every fucking time. That sounds like every Jamie thing. Every time. It? Every time me and Becky go to eat. Do you want a star? I'm not sure. Do you want a star? Oh, maybe. But I don't know. Oh, and, oh, oh. And then we end up buying two and sharing them. Because we every time we end up getting them. But I don't know why we even bother having the debate. Paris is that person that'll go, right, well, let's have starters. Like, okay, I'll, I think I'll have this. She goes, what, should you, what do you think I should have? Whatever you want. Yeah, but I don't want to get jealous. Of what? Of, of the fact that you might, yours might be better than mine. Like, oh, fucking hell. Just pick a starter. If you want some, you can have some. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I've never heard that before. I might get jealous. <laughs> yeah, she gets food envy really badly. So it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a thing, apparently. Fair Maybe it's just a Welsh thing. I don't know. Maybe. 
but I'm down for this. Fuck wine tasting. Wine's soup tasting a thing. <laughs> Trying loads of different soups of fresh bread. Please, anyone else? Oh, I'd be well up for that. Make that be thing, I'm, yes. That'd be so good, wouldn't it? That'd be so good. I mean, just for the fresh bread to be fair. Fresh bread oh. dipped in soup is just, oh. And that smell, like that smell of fresh bread oh. is unbelievably yeah. divine. So this guy posted a conversation between him and his wife, okay? And he titled it, I think my wife is fed up with me. <laughs> <laughs> he says, how would you roast a cobbler? To which she replies, what? No, first of all, you have to use a recipe. Look at my dessert binder by the microwave. Use the peaches, not the apples, because the peaches are starting to go bad. But check in the cabinet by the fridge for most of the spices you'll need. But preheat the oven and keep it on the timer so don't and then don't let it burn. Oh, you just make fun of his shoes. I hate you. <laughs> I could see the shit joke on the horizon sat there just waiting for it. <laughs> make fun of oh. shoes for fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm not gonna be like I would be livid if I've heard the amount of effort she put into that message. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna leave you, man. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> fucking great joke. Though. <laughs> okay, three more for the the hunter edition, and we'll move on. Fallout Boy fans would be like. God, this lyric saved my life. And the lyric is, we're going da da in a newly era. <laughs> going da da in a newly era. <laughs> hey, I don't actually know what the fuck he says there. Neither do I. I just sort of mumble what I think it says. <laughs> I think it's early around or something. I have no idea. I just go, da 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 I don't have a clue what he says. I could look it up, but it's more fun to do it my way. Yeah, well, absolutely. It's always fun. <laughs> Backing up the lyrics is the best thing in the world. <laughs> we talk about it all the time. If you, if you watch our live shows from the, from the festivals we've been to, we talk about it all the time. So it's yeah. absolutely great. Um, far or two, I was home for Christmas and my parents cooked a beef tenderloin and I said, man, Budapest is going to love this. My parents were confused and said, they asked who Budapest was. I said, well, I named my stomach Budapest because it's the capital of Hungary. And that's when they stopped calling me son. <laughs> oh. oh, But God, finally, Jamie, so bad. I know, but I'm going to save you. I'm going to save you. I'm okay. going to save you. If mediums can communicate with the dead, imagine what a large could do. Fuck's sake. Oh, and that was another edition of Tom's Journal. The hundredth and final edition. Fuck's sake, that's so bad. But kind of great at the same time. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. I mean, yeah, absolutely. You Don't fuck with the journal, man. <laughs> don't fuck with the journal. It's the best thing in the world. Uh, I don't know how you continue to find this shit for a hundred fucking weeks, but there we are. <laughs> it's crazy. It's really nuts, actually, I think, that the, <laughs> Just to check the, 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 you know, how much gold's on the internet these days. It really does. It's about getting into schools and talking to young people because, you know, I, I know that people can change. Uh, and, it, and it's about talking to people and getting them to understand and perhaps step back from violence and, and prejudice and whatever. And we just need to work together and keep on the good fight there. Absolutely. Hey there, guys. We are ecstatically happy to announce that we are associated with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. The times are changing, and with the unfortunate death of Sophie, those changes have made a massive impact for the future. If Sophie was with us still today, I can guarantee what you are doing will still be reaching so many lives of young teenagers, young adults, and those who wish to be as different as possible so thank you very much to find out more about this incredible foundation and all the work they do and more importantly how you can help head on over to www.sophielancasterfoundation.com 
ma 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 Mr. Stevens. This is the hundredth edition, and because it's you, this is the one I got for this week. Jamie, 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 Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to participate in Jamie's Participation Challenge. <laughs> oh, I should remember participate at the same time. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for this week's 100th special edition of the show, we're going all the way back to the first edition because we're going to repeat that audience participation again. So this week, I ask again. If you were to live with a member of the Marvel, Marvel, Marvel Cinematic Universe, who would be your super roommate? I'll say you, Mr. Stevens. I'd probably have Iron Man because he could build anything and it'd be great. He really could. And plus, he, plus my favourite. Plus, the one thing that really irked me about this, and yes, I'm using that word irked, irked word. was that people based their answers on the actors or actresses that played them not to take into account, it's the superhero themselves, not... Do you know what I mean? Yes. That's why I was a bit like... People are like, oh, I'd love Black Widow because obviously she's got your hands in there. That's not what we're asking. No. There is a lot of perversion in this one. There oh, 100%. Quite a few... How about who would you? See, I was, I was trying to think about this, and I weirdly, if I'm going off the MCU versions, I'm going to say Hawkeye, because he seems like a very humble family man and a great guy to live with. He's always doing shit around the house. Looks after his family. I think he'd be a great roommate to have. Nice. And he's not got superpowers. You can accidentally fuck up the place. Oh, well, he's got loads of robots. Yeah, but neither does Iron Man. He just has a suit. So we just have loads of robots doing shit around the house. Be great. This is also very true. Yeah, well, I'm going with Hawkeye. I think he'd be a great housemate to have. Good show. Bows and arrows everywhere. I fucking love archery. We're going to start off with a bit of perversion. Phil Andre. Storm, please. Enough said. It's pervert. Who can blame you? Jamie Price. This one really made me chuckle. Black Bolt. This was my, ba- my favourite. This is your favourite. Black Bolt. Peace and quiet. Yeah, how beautiful that <laughs> would be. That's such a great answer. <laughs> oh, you brilliant answer. <laughs> oh. Jerry Keane. More perversion. Black Widow. Because, well, I do really need to go any further. Yes, Jerry. Yes, you do. Tell us more. Is this is this some Russian friends you have that you want to talk to? Is there, you know? Yeah, there could be more to it. She's not just an object, Jerry. I'm going to have to say this to so many people. <laughs> Nathan Benham, Iron Man, but we'd have to live at his house. I mean, <laughs> that, I mean that's fair. I mean, that's Oof. fair. And perversion just isn't from the men. It's from the women too. Claire Jones, Thor. Enough said. Bloody Thor. <laughs> Jordan Slade, an answer that really made me laugh. Vision, he seems like he'd be a very polite housemate. Yes, I reckon he would. <laughs> very polite. <laughs> Stuart Jones, Thanos. I was like, why? And he said, he said because he would half my morning commute to work. I mean, fair. There'd be less traffic. Fair. Can't argue with but that. But what if he's one of them? Oh, that's a good point, actually. That's a very good point. Gemma Williams. Let's face it, living with someone from this universe, the home insurance would go through the roof. But nonetheless, I think I'd love to live with Loki. Imagine the fun we could have and tricks through adventures across the world. Fair point. Yeah, yeah, he might take you in some fun with him. Phil Jolly. <laughs> this is a really very laugh. I'm not really up to speed with such things, so I'll just say some superhero woman with fantastic thighs and a thing for long-haired, overweight old men. Fuck's sake. A version again? A version again. <clears throat> Graham Arnold, Thor for the free electricity and Doctor Strange for unlimited beer. Genius. That is fucking genius. That's the sort that of answer That is genius. Yes. <laughs> Becky Westwood, the wife's getting involved. She says, Doctor Strange, you can travel wherever you want across time. Like it. Like it. Good thinking. Good thinking. Dave Wright. 
too soon, Dave. He says, Tony Stark, because he's dead, therefore I'd have the whole place to myself. Nah. Too soon, Dave. I'm still still not over that is film. It, is he dead in the comics? No, but we're going for MCU here. So. Uh, okay. Okay. Jude Milk from our friends at Acid Age says, I've been thinking for ages about this and I can't quite decide, but I have decided that the Hulk would be the worst housemate because he'd just wrecked the place. Fair. Fair point. Fair point. Michaela Spence says, I don't watch Marvel, so I can't really answer this properly. But if there's one with some super, kind of super speed, they would be a great half flatmate. They could do all the cleaning, all the cooking, and they wouldn't be in the bathroom for two hours a day. And they'd be a good one to send on the beer run. So Quicksilver is your perfect roommate, Michaela. I'll give you a couple more. Liam Tinsley. He says, I've got three. Sorry, I've got four. He says, the Hulk. Because I just think it'd be a great drinking buddy. I mean, if you've got like Smart Hulk, yeah, I'll go, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. He says, and then Captain Marvel, she's very smart and protective and could help with lifting the heavy stuff around the house. Yeah. Scarlet Witch, a scene she wants to be a wife and a family mom, so the house will be clean and always smelling like cookies. Yeah. And Black Widow, she can get anything you want. Need a new TV? She's got it sorted. Need a new sofa? She'll sort it. Need a new jumbo jet armoured with nukes? She can get it. Fair point. Fair point. And last but not least, because this one really made me laugh, and I don't know why, it's just one of those ones that tickled me. It's Robbie Williams. He says, Ant Man wouldn't need much space. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's not wrong. He's not wrong at all. Can't argue that, especially if he's in the quantum realm. Sorted. <laughs> I enjoyed that one. That was a good bit of fun this week. I like I like that. Yeah, cool perfect. Back. Like that you went all the way back to the first edition, but we really appreciate everyone that participates in Jamie's participation challenge. So thank you so much to each and every one of you that gets involved. Um, I just wanted to quickly, before I jump in, say a massive, massive happy birthday to a huge um, legend that's helped out with the show uh, and has been on it quite a few times. Mally Malpass, that's what I say. Yes. A massive happy birthday to you, you absolute hero. Uh, love and adore you always. So I just wanted to get that out there. Um we recorded this on Tuesday for anyone that's, uh, that was curious. So, uh, But thank you to everyone that participated in Jamie's Challenge. If you enjoy the challenges and you enjoy Callum Streetchings and you enjoy Tom's Journal, the absolute garbage we talk at the beginning and the interview, then you enjoy the other 99 editions of the Chronicles of Podcast, wherever you get your podcasts from, with Google, Spotify, Apple. I can't believe we're at 100. It's absolutely yes. phenomenal. Here's to 100 more. So excited for the next for the next two couple, three, couple of years for this show. Well, for the future, just in general, more than anything else. You can also find us on YouTube at the Chronicles of Podcast. Please hit that subscribe button. It means the fucking world to us that we're getting close to 300. We are so close. It's unreal. And it just the fact that so many of you, you know, subscribe to the show and enjoy it, whether you watch a minute or a hundred, it just means everything to us. So thank you so much to everyone that subscribed so far. Hit that bell to get notified when new videos are released and comment to your heart's content. We are finally finished with our Bloodstock interviews. We are so sorry it took so long to get them all out, but they are all there for you to enjoy. So please go ahead and smash out as many of them as you can. You can also find our interviews on there. Our full shows are on there. Our Way Back Wednesdays are on there. Our Dublin Crest vlog, our Bloodstock vlog from last year, our Trees interviews, like I said, our Bloodstock interviews. Every, there's so much content there. There's over 400 videos for you to enjoy. So please get them in your face. It would mean the absolute world to us. You can also find us on Facebook at the Chronicles of Podcast. Please hit that like button, share it everywhere, talk to all your mates, tell them about it, tell them about it you, because they're missing out and they need to know all about this show. But Jamie, thinking about it with sweat in my eyes, where else could you find us? We're ordering the brand new of Virtue album Omen out 29th of this month. Absolutely. Or on the X, Twitter, at TCO Pod. And whilst you are pre-ordering your uh, copy of Omen by our Virtue out 29th of September and scrolling through our X slash Twitter. Where else could you find us? Stocking up on tins of rice pudding, ready for that next wedding you're going to. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> or on the Instagram <laughs> at TCO Pod. You can also find us on TikTok at TCO Pod. Make sure you go watch Jamie's Chesney Hawks video. You can find us on LinkedIn at the Chronicles of Podcast. Make sure you connect with us on there. Or you can come on down to our gorgeous little website at www.thechroniclesofpodcast.com. That would mean the world to us. You can find out all about us are on there, all of our episodes and shows are on there, all of our affiliates and sponsors are on there, and our shop is on there as well. Go get yourself some TCO Pod merch. It would mean the absolute world to us. That's follow us on all the socials at TCO Pod and on 
subscribe to us on YouTube at the Chronicles of Podcast. And for the 100th edition, now over to my co-host. He has some nice little things he'd like to say to you. Here he is, live and in person and in colour, Jimmy Westwood. Hi. Before we get out of here, let's say thank you to a few of our friends. For 100 editions now, you've been hearing beautiful, beautiful music that has been brought to you by one man. That man is Mr. Singer-Songwriter Matt Roberts. Make sure you follow him on Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your music from. Make sure you follow him on all the social medias at Matt Roberts Music. And as I just said, massive thank you to Matt. 100 editions we've had his beautiful music in our ears. The music on the intro of all these Bloodstock interviews, it comes from Matt. All the music you hear during the little snippets throughout the show comes from Matt. The opening tune, it comes from Matt. Everything comes from Matt. And we can't say a big enough thank you to the man. It means the absolute world you do that for us. Go check out Matt's latest single, Rat Race. We cannot wait to hear it. He put a little snippet out recently on his Instagram of, of uh, uploading a new song to a radio station. So is there a new song on the way? I, we cannot wait to find out. Make sure you're following him, like I said, to make sure you hear that first. And of course, we have to say a massive thank you to Mr. Braden Barry and his Stay Cozy Clothing. Head on over to www.staycozyclothing.com or download the smartphone app. Have a look at those beautiful pieces of apparel he has on that website. It could be that beautiful T-shirt that Mr. Stevens is wearing right there. It could be that hoodie I'm sometimes wearing. It could be that cap that is donning Mr. Stevens' head right now. It could be those beautiful mugs that I bang on about every single week. It could even be a vinyl copy of his incredible album, why is the name escape me? Beneath the Roses. Beneath the Roses. Oh, I do apologise there, Braden. A little bit of a brain fart. <laughs> Whatever it is, add it to your basket. And then when you get to the checkout, add the discount code The Chronicles and get yourself 10% off your order. And last but not least, we have to say a massive thank you to the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. They are stamping out prejudice, hatred, and intolerance everywhere. And I mean everywhere. This is not a UK thing. This is a global issue and it is about time that it come to an end my friends so let us join together and celebrate our differences what makes us different share sophie's story head on over to www.sophielancasterfoundation.com if you're not familiar with sophie's story share it with your friends it means the absolute world to us this charity means the absolute world to miss me and mr stevens there we would we were young alternative kids we may not look like it now but we once looked a little bit different and got treated very different because of it and it's about time it stopped happening as Mr. Stevens alluded to not long ago, our Bloodstock interviews are now out. And very soon we will have our second Bloodstock vlog using the footage from those interviews. We cannot wait to get that out for you guys. It means the absolute world. If you can check that out and share it once it is out into the world. And last but not least, for the hundredth time, a massive thank you to you, my beautiful co-host. It has been an absolute pleasure for this past 100. And I cannot do it. wait to do it a hundred times more. And over and over and, and over, over and again. Over. We, we are not going anywhere. Um, no, like like I said at the beginning, uh, just thank you to everyone that's checked this show out. Thank you to everyone that's listened, watched, whatever you've done, said hello to us, um, came to our gigs. We've got another one Thursday, uh, Wednesday, 22nd November at Subside in Birmingham. Yes, in Birmingham again, but we'll get out of Birmingham next year, I promise you. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, it, it just... It just it blows my mind that the opportunity we've had, the people we spoke to, you know, the people that have listened to us and everything, it just means everything. And we can't wait to give you 100 more plus, plus, and keep going. It's uh, it's absolutely phenomenal. But Jamie, 100 editions in the bag. Absolutely, my friend. It's been incredible so far. And we look forward to seeing... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, let me start that again. And as for this week, we'll see you all next week. For the Chronicles of Lydia Mark. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.